Classic right there, because guess what? It's American Craft Beer Week. We're living in America. Little James Brown from back in the day, before a man went to the grave, and nobody still knew what the hell he was saying half the time. But welcome in to another broadcast. Obviously, I'm your host, Rod J, here. Joining me, we got the uh, Beer Patrol, Average Joe, who's trying not to Dude. Laughing, but you can unmute yourself now. <laughs> Dude, you cannot, you cannot sneak James Brown on us like that. You just can't do it. <laughs> you just can't. It was fantastic, but holy Christ, I was, I don't know what's happening anymore. Fantastic. Well, who Classic. Else open, who's else to open up for American Craft Beer Week but the, oh. you know, the James Brown? I should have had the video with him getting draped over and walked off the stage. You yeah, know? you could have, you could have. That would have been proper. <laughs> now we're going to all get in the hot tub. And we got uh, Todd here. Welcome, Todd. God damn. How's it going, gentlemen? Doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah, yeah. American Craft Beer Week, May 14th and May 20th. We're kind of in the midst of that. Still got a few days left. So uh, hopefully people are out there drinking some good craft American beer. Mm -hmm. I'm actually breaking out one I haven't had before tonight in honor of it. The Emperor. Bring in the hemp. Oh, nice. I got a flashback to Pulp Fiction somehow by saying bringing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but been waiting to get my hands on this one. Finally got here. Seven percent ABV. I don't have the IBU listed on here. I don't think. Good to go. Enjoy by July. These will not make it that far out. So we're in good shape there. And uh, oh, they put in their label. I just noticed it. A hundred percent employee owned. Were they doing that before? Mm. I don't remember seeing maybe, that before. Maybe, yeah, I don't know when they started that. It had to be recent, you know. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I just don't look at their labels. Well, that's a big thing they're actually proud of. Yeah. This is uh, the Hemperer HPA. It's a new kind of hoppy beer, blended hemp with hops for complete sensory com uh, domination. See mm -hmm. our sustainability efforts at thehemperer.com. You know, this could be kind of interesting, though, because I've had hemp beer before, but... Will there be enough stuff with the rise of cannabis in areas and hemp becoming more involved that there'll be a new beer style at some point where it'll be HBA? Oh. Just never know. Yeah, no, never you don't. <laughs> Everything can't be New England IPA. <laughs> I know it could be. Well, I mean, it's kind of to that point at this point. I mean, it could. I could have that shit with breakfast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> Still something from Joe D there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And what are you guys drinking there? Uh, yeah, go on. Oh, you want me to go? Drinking other half. Uh, the double dry hot broccoli. The only thing about this is it's six and a half months old. I want. I, I took one can of this and one can of the double citrus daydream just to see how it age out. And <laughs> I will tell you right now, this is still tasting pretty fantastic. Not as good as it was fresh, but it fell off a little bit. But man. Yeah, I know. So this is the second other half one that I've done, letting it sit in my fridge for half a year, and a lot of people would be like, "Oh my god, no!" I mean, this is actually drinking quite well. I think if I gave this to somebody blind, they would be surprised that this is a six and a half month old New England style double IPA. We yeah, actually found the glass because mm -hmm. they're blind. So oh, it's really good though. It's 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 more um like broccoli fresh. It has like a little bit more dankness to it. 
that kind of is dissipated and it's just pretty much like citrus and stone fruit juice, like peach, like a mix of peach and like ruby red grapefruit juice. It's pretty, yeah. pretty much what it is. So, and um, what is it? It's 7.9 drinks like it's five. So. Six method IPA. You took one drink and your head didn't explode. No, oh my God. What yeah. the hell's going on? I didn't pour it down a drain. Like I'm enjoying <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> the world's about to end in like 16 minutes, whatever. But that, that's the one thing is like if you're drinking, I think any hop forward beer, you want it as fresh as can be, right? To give it like a prop with the brewer intended to, uh, nowadays anyway. But right. like if, you, if, you, if you've had these beers and whatnot, like, like I had whatever couple four packs of this i wanted to do it as an experiment because i really never sat on a new england style ipa like i've sat on older ipas so to do a new england style from a, a hype brewery and one that gets a lot of great press and make great beers tell you what um these have fallen off a little bit from when i had them fresh but not enough for me to not like them they're still pretty damn enjoyable so do it yourself sometime buy a four pack or six pack new england style throw one in the fridge forget about it for like four or five months and see how it goes Oh, I've done that. Not on purpose. They just get shuffled <laughs> to the back sometimes. And you're well, like, oh, a, shit, I should have drank that. <laughs> yeah, that will happen, especially if you buy four and six packs and you just so much new beer. This I did on purpose. Though. I was like, I'm going to throw one of each. I did I did this and then a couple local beers from Finn Man. Uh, one collab they did with McKellar and then another uh, one. They did, the Trial by Wombat. I have that in the fridge. I'm going to let it sit for a while, too. Just see how it goes. A, lot, a lot of people... A lot of people definitely get wrapped up in that for the wrong reason. Like oh, you said, do. it will fall off some, but it's, it's not what the brewer intended. But it's not like you're, yeah. you're going to get disease or something because you drink a six-month-old IPA. You know I mean? Yeah, if, if you're a beer tuber, I don't think you should just be sitting on IPAs for a half a year and then doing like a pro, trying to do a proper review of it because right, it's right. probably not going to work out more often than not. But it doesn't mean it's not worth a try and experiment, see how it goes. Yeah. We drink time. Uh, I'm drinking we one. Drink. Actually, uh, a coworker, my wife's, her and her husband went to, I guess, Colorado not too long ago and brought back a six pack of Moose Drool Brown Ale Ooh. from yeah. Big Sky Brewing Company in Montana. Have, you, have either of you ever had that before? Yep. I have. I, I have not had that one. A couple times. I think it's pretty good for a brown ale. Oddly enough, they knew I liked beer and brought it back. So, hey, win-win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't complain about free beer. It's always imagine, nice. imagine that, right? Yeah, it's a 5.2% it's a ABV uh, on the can. You find out you like beer. They like to bring you more. Yeah. Uh, that nice yeah. yeah, it's not always going to be good beer, but at least it's beer. Yeah. And they have a little uh, logo on the back. It says, we make water fun. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of Montana, Water. right? They're out of Montana? Yeah. 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 Big Sky Brewing Company out of Montana. It doesn't okay. say where in Montana. But... I tell you what, the aroma on this thing is so freaking big. Oh, baby. Miss Alou out of Montana. Never heard of it. But... Not me either. Baby, the dank, Rajay, baby, the no. dank, a little dankness, baby. Yeah, but it's kind of got like a nice burn feel to it as well. It's like you're. Freaking like if you were burning outside and you were standing in front of the bonfire or something with it, it's just, I mean, it's just going and going and going. Rajay's into it. Going on and on. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> on to the next one? No, not on to the next one. Drink it. <laughs> that one, is that one new? Is that one new? That's New Belgium? Is that New Belgium? That's new Belgium, yeah. Very good body, kind of a leathery feel. Oh, baby, it's leathery, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it's like you're eating your uh, couch, baby. You lay the boy. Nice lacing there that hangs. Hanging up there like it's Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, do you remember anything about this beer? Moose Drool? Uh, I remember enjoying it. Um, brown ales are like if, if you pulled me on my least favorite styles, brown ales would mm, probably not be in like the bottom five, but it'd be close just, just out of personal preference. Uh, but I remember that one being for for a brown ale. Like I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think actually I had it a couple times. Uh, the second time I had it, Paul P. A. Brunus, he sent me. Uh, his his friend lived close to Montana or something, and he had an extra, and he gave it to me, and I liked it just as much as the first time I had it. So, how about you? What yeah, do you think? Not, yeah, it's not bad. It's uh, I, I like you. Brown ale is not one I tend to lean towards. 
Mm-hmm. I don't I don't hate them, but it's like no. said, it's not my favorite style by any means. It, it's that yeah, it's pretty tasty. It's I mean kind of water watery a little bit, but I, I know brown ales are yeah, and it's fine. That side, but and it's sub six percent too. So yeah, it's not. Yeah. But I had like I remember having like a confectionery sweetness, almost caramel brown sugar thing going on. Yeah, it does it does have some caramel notes, a uh, little little sweetness to it. Um, definitely, you know, the malt bill build to it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice drinkable. It'd be a nice drinkable sit on the back porch in the middle of ninety five degree weather <laughs> that we've had in the last few days, and or uh, or sit down or sit in your house and hang out with Rajay on the beer flow show. Either way. Your phone. Or, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's do a show from the beer cellar at some point. Oh boy, like the Bat Cave down there. <laughs> <laughs> like the Bat Cave. Let's have all gadgets. It's just beers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quick, I need to think. Hand me a stout. <laughs> yeah, I rewatched Dark. Uh, what is it? Was it the Dark Knight? Or is it Dark Knight Rise? Well, the one with Heath Ledger's Joker. So the, that's the Dark Knight. Yeah, right? rewatched that a couple days ago. So fucking good. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it was so good in that role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he took himself to the brink there. You hear some yeah. of the stories about how that movie was shot and some of the ways, like, if people try to like say something that broke character with him, you like go off on him and stuff. So he, he he locked himself apparently in like a hotel or a motel, I believe it was for like a month straight, trying to get into character and stuff. And I was like, holy shit, <laughs> was it <laughs> crazy? Yeah, was it that movie not long after that he killed himself or whatever yeah it was a little bit after it, it was actually they didn't the movie didn't come out yet it was like the right after that's, they filmed most of it right that's what i was thinking it was in that same time frame yeah the people were sad when he went to go see it, it like, yeah last movie yeah got a lot of comments already but they're not they're not german yet so okay. <laughs> craig craig uh Cabir review says america my kind of place and then he channels his dinner, John Macaron, and says, You cannot be serious. <laughs> Bob? So it says, Surely you cannot be serious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. He's from the UK. We'll let it, we'll, we'll accept it. <laughs> um, and then Bump from Joe D. Show and also from uh, PA says he's currently drinking his first ever Cigar City beer, which is the Maduro Brown Ale. And he says, uh-huh. Cigar City finally comes to Pittsburgh. I'm just picturing him saying that in the rock voice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's another Brown Ale that I enjoy. Like, I, I guess Brown Ale probably isn't one of my least favorite styles. But each time I have one that's supposed to be pretty good, I always enjoy them. And that one I remember being pretty good as well. Yeah, uh, they say I do like that one better than this yeah, they had opened their distribution up last year. Oh yeah, so, baby, yeah. they in Michigan, baby, they in Michigan. Skipped over Kentucky, but that's all right. Yeah, I'll tell you, okay. no, we we had them here. In New, we had them in here in New York like two or three years ago. They uh were distributing to New York City and uh, a lot of um, bottle shops in the Western New York area. They have a tendency to drive to New York City like once a month or once every couple months and just bring a bunch of stuff back because it's actually, I guess, legal to do so. And they would come back with fresh High Lie and like Maduro Brown and like Invasion IPA and a couple others. And I haven't seen it in like two years, but it was interesting when it was here. Um, but I like High Lie. I don't know if you guys have had High Lie from Cigar City. No, because they don't yes. come here, Joe. That's oh, what sorry, I- sorry, Ron. <laughs> sorry, Ron. I knew that. Um, you said that. I, I, had, I, I haven't had any of my travels either. <laughs> that's what I was getting at if you had it. Uh, out and about. Right, how do they drive through our states and not drop any off? <laughs> right. uh, I don't even like to have a truck turnover. At least Budweiser try to force <laughs> it. Right. You know, it's always Budweiser, Bud Light. Every single time. Put some of the uh, road strips down or something. we gotta, we got to re- work something out on this. Uh, Craig and Baum ex- uh, exchange pleasantries. They're like, hey. He's like, hi. It's good times. Uh, Backwoods Billy Craft Beer Review says, Finn City Brewing Company out of Ocean City, Maryland, has a weed beer similar, Roger, to the hemp brewery you're drinking. Nice, nice. Uh, Foamy Head 13, he's back, and he says, hey, everybody. What's up, Foamy? Hey, Foamy. Hey, homie, Foamy. <laughs> <laughs> Foamy, my homie. And then, <laughs> <laughs> homie, don't play that. <laughs> Uh, Craig says, oh, my word, Joe, hashtag beer porn. Uh, this does, you know, look like your typical I want to drink all the juice IPA. That's how that looks. Um, Billy says, better than Eric's six-year-old IPA. LOL, yes. This, is, <laughs> this, this beer is a little bit better than the Brooklyn East IPA that was like six years old. Uh, granted, it's six months old, a little bit different, but uh, yeah. 
And uh, Brooklyn still hasn't contacted him. Yeah, I'm still so disappointed in Brooklyn on that. And I was disappointed in the store for I was stepping up. No yeah. bad beer like that. You have to think if you're a store owner or um, Brooklyn themselves, like you want to make it right. Like Eric's probably not going to buy a lot of Brooklyn stuff, but that's not even the point. It's like he could tell other people. Like I don't even like based on his experience, I don't even want to go buy more Brooklyn beer. Honestly. Right. So, so I mean, it's, stop even buying at that store. They're going to put old stuff out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's terrible that there's a six year old IPA on the shelves anywhere. That's disgusting. Um, Craig says your opinion on Crusher IPA. Going to try uh, and buy a can tomorrow morning online. Craig, are you talking about uh, the Alchemist Crusher? If so, I enjoyed it, but I liked Focal Banger and Hetty quite quite a bit more. But if you get in the UK, then you freaking buy it because nobody gets Alchemist beers outside of Vermont. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that shit. yeah, like if I could go buy Crusher, even if it's not one of my favorite, I'd still buy it right now because it's it's a good beer. If it's Alchemist, and they they, they do good stuff. Um, Billy says, "I have a few pumpkin ales in the fridge from September, oh, baby. You got to get into them, Billy." But the pedal or ABV, they're appearing a pumpkin. He could be all right. Yeah, I mean the the spices will probably die off. Uh, that's the first thing I've had some age like pumpkins from um, Southern Tier. First thing you notice is that the cinnamon and like the allspice and everything kind of dies out. But then depending on what kind of pumpkin ale drinker you are, like the big sweetness from it comes to the forefront. So it almost has like, like pumpkin specifically, but a lot of pumpkin ales, they have like a vanilla, almost graham cracker, crazy stuff going on. So like, I don't mind the aged pumpkin ales depending on it. Unless it's like shipyard uh, pumpkin head where they don't even use real pumpkin, I don't think. Or if they do, they don't use a lot of it. And it's just like all cinnamon. And then you let that age, and then it's just like the weakest watery beer you've ever seen. Um, he also says, I have had that. It's one of the best brown ales in the book, 101 Beers You Must Try Before You Die in Book World of Z Beers. I think he's talking about the, the book. Yeah, yeah, that book case too, yeah. Sweet. Uh, the moose drill is in the top 100 you should try? The, your moose drill. Top 1,000 them. One. Oh, 1,000. Okay. Baby, it's the mooth drew, baby. Um, he says, also Billy says, Rajay, they have AC hops that are similar to pot. See a Garrett Oliver. Yeah. I see Garrett Oliver. I'm going to tell him about Eric. <laughs> yeah, I've had a, hemp, I had a hemp beer before. One of our other breweries had done it. I might have been Fallon's brewery that actually did it. Uh, or O'Fallon's. You know what I'm talking about, Todd, right? Is it Fallon? Oh, oh it's O'Fallon's. O'Fallon, yeah. O'Fallon, yeah. You only had it up here one time before at one of the uh, breweries, not breweries, one of the restaurants I don't tap. But uh, this is definitely more of a hit than what that one was. I'm going to say with this one, this is going to be one that's going to be close to either a kind of a love it or not love it type situation. I don't think there's going to be a lot of middle ground with it. It's kind of like a, it's going to have like a type of appeal to it that either you're going to be digging it or you're going to be like, mm, don't really dig that that's one. That's much. Yeah. yeah. But I think mm -hmm. it's. It's got a nice little uh, taste base I like, so it's definitely strong. Pungent is the key word in it for sure. It punches you in the nose, and you get those flavors, and when you burn them back up, you still have those flavors going. So, Three years ago, I had the first ever hemp beer, and it came courtesy of Greg. Uh, you, you know Rob Greg, the you know, the guy on the Canadian yeah, show. Yeah. Burns everything great. Uh, Bylog. And he said he gave he gave me a beer from a Canadian brewery and it was called Millennium Buzz Hemp Beer. And it was from the Cool Beer Company. And the Cool Beer Company is basically like this macro company in Toronto that produces all this just terrible macro beer. Like it's really bad. And he gave it to me. And it wasn't that bad. It was the first hemp beer I ever had. And it was like three years ago. And uh I, I feel like if somebody does a hemp beer well, it probably can be amazing. Honestly. Yeah, but it all depends on what like your baby. I think they used an amber, like an amber lager. So it was like yeah. it was passable. I think you gave it two five, two seven five. But I'd be curious to see. I call it, that's pretty amber. So, yeah. oh baby, that's an amber ale, baby. Oh my god, now, they call it an HP. What is it? A, a hemp pale ale? Is that what it's supposed to be? Pretty much. I mean, they pretty much they put some hemp into it for sure. I mean, you definitely get it. Nice. Um, Billy says, Joe, have you had honey brown ale? J.W. Dundee Brewing, brewed by Genesee. We actually talked about this. Uh, when the hell did we talk about this, Rod? It was somewhere. Last night after Nick's show. Oh, no. man. Yeah, it was Nick's show. I was just commenting. You guys were on Nick's yeah. show. Yeah, the, Dundee. the Honey Brown was, was very popular here, obviously, because Jenny brewed it and it was everywhere. But I have not seen 
that beer on the show. Benny's still like, when I look at my can, will it say Genesee on there? I feel, you know, they do. Yeah, they do. Okay. Um, let me see if I can see people drinking it lately. Um, last check in out on Tapped is an hour ago. So they're still brewing it. I do not see it. I, like now, So now the hunt is on for the Honey Brown. I'm going <laughs> to brew it. Must I'm gonna drink it, yeah. Because honestly, back when I didn't really drink beer, back in like the two thousands, um, like two thousand to like two thousand nine, I didn't hate that beer. I, 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 that was one of the beers that like I did. I almost didn't. I, it's a beer, and I, but back then it was just like okay, it's sweet, it has honey. It's not really a beer, uh, but I haven't seen it in a while. And uh, I think it, around here they've kind of replaced the Dundee line because they used to have a Dundee craft line with right. the Brew House Pilot Batch here i don't see any dundee offerings one of the worst beers i ever had was from dundee so i have bad experience about them it was like one of their i think there was an october fest it might have been off but it was absolutely horrendous well if you can't find <laughs> anything you because yeah we get the honey rounds still yeah i don't know if i'm trading for the honey round or like i need you to send me no <laughs> you sent you send me honey brown i'll send you a cream out fair deal <laughs> that's probably that is pretty fair <laughs> <laughs> it's not make it happen rod it'll be fantastic um <laughs> Foamy Head says, I've heard Oscar Blues brews for Cigar City to expand their distribution. Yeah, I heard something like that, too, because their stuff is not all being brewed at their brewery in Florida. I know they have some contract brewing going on, hence the ability to uh, get it out to new markets. So um, I've seen some people say, like, High Life isn't as good as it used to be. Then again, those people could be the same people that remember High Life from five years ago, and now their palate is completely different, and they they remember it being amazing, but now they have all these all awesome local beers and crazy beers showing up and i'm like oh it doesn't hold up it happens but i remember enjoying high life and uh, i had it like last year again and it was it was pretty good but i don't know when, when you start doing the contract brewing have you have you had the uh, oak age one and there an oak age one or yes something? dude and I've i never got, had that one is oh, that one good it was now mind you when i when i had it, it was like four years ago so my palate was hashtag baby palate but uh, I remember getting the weirdest note out of it, and it was dill. It was like actual, the fresh herb dill out of a. It was they used white oak, and the white oak they were using, I got dill and I got something else. It was, yeah, baby, it tasted like I was drinking pickle juice, baby. So good, kind of my palate. Uh, no, but uh, it it was it was really unique and really tasty. But I only had it once, and I I loved it. So if you see it, try it because it's interesting at the very least. You might hate it. You probably won't get Dill because my palate's dumb, but you know, either way you look at it. I, 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 I think that I think I think the regular Hala is definitely one of those beers that was highly sought after for years. And now, mm-hmm. like you said, there's so many uh, breweries doing local stuff that's just as equally as good. That it's like, yeah, I'm a big deal. Or you know, distributions widened a little bit. And now it's like, yeah. Well, that's just, you know, you want I, what you can't have, and now that you can get it a little easier. I mentioned that with KBS, and I'd, I'll do it every single beer flow show. Just to upset Rod, but that, <laughs> that is like that is like the prime example of KBS. Five years ago, tons of hype. Nobody could get it. If you did, you, you, people would trade for it now. And now it they distribute seemingly everywhere with KBS. It sits on the shelves, and it's still a very tasty bourbon barrel aged, uh, you know, imperial stout with coffee and chocolate and whatnot. But there are a lot that. I don't want to say put it to shame, but there are a lot that are better that, than that beer, and a lot are made locally and brewed locally. So you don't – when people drink it nowadays, they're like, ah, it's all right. You have to remember, when this first came out, I, there was a handful of barrel-aged beers available, period, like across the U.S. So the people that were hyping and getting crazy is because that wasn't available. Now here we are in 2018, middle of 2018. Dude, your local brewery brews probably an awesome barrel-aged beer. So, you know, it's – it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges. So I, it's, yeah, I mean, when it comes to hype, I think you got to understand like nowadays hype is a bit different than it was five years ago. The hype. Don't, don't, yeah. don't lose the hype. No hype beer review. Shout out to Kyle, but no, no hype. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have uh, Billy continuing. He always, so he's, this is for Eric. He says, I, I always have to properly conduct myself. Eric will be about 15 minutes. Yeah, so I'll may, maybe reread this later, but he also says, if the beer is bad, by law, he has a right to his money back. See local state's attorney office and liquor board, federal ATF for Eric. I think he mentioned that last time. Yeah, I don't know if Eric's going to go to that like level, but I wouldn't necessarily not do that because, hey, that's money, and that's a disrespect from Brooklyn and the store. 
no sleep till. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, for believe they haven't reached back out to him. It's just mind boggling that a company of that size for distribution, you know, I mean, it, you, maybe someone would have been understand if it was just a local thing, but it's yeah. not a local beer, so it's like you yeah. need to make it right. I think you make a good point, Todd. Even if nothing else, at least, res- at least respond to him. Be like, hey, sorry about that. You know, fuck off, whatever. At least respond, you know, and say something. Don't just ignore it. That's rude. Don't yeah. tell you, son. The fact that they're a huge craft beer company is very disappointing because you would think they would have the better customer service because I'm sure they hear from people every day, you know, all day. So, you know, I don't know. It's sad. It's sad. It's good. It's well, like I said, like I said a couple of weeks ago, uh, when that we was talking about, it, I was like, maybe they're they think they're big enough that one guy in Michigan doesn't make any difference, you know? Yeah, which is totally horseshit. You know, yeah. it shouldn't be yeah. that way. But that's where a small micro, more micro brewery might be like, oh, hey, sorry, here's here's your yeah. refund and a little extra something, you know, for your for your bubbles. Agreed. Uh, I, yeah, my one hundred percent agree, Todd. What <laughs> to say? Will I? So Craig says. Yes, and this is now listen. This is a guy in the UK. Okay, Craig's in the UK, and he says, "Yes, there's Heady Topper, Crusher, and Focal Banger available online, along with beers from the Vale Brewing Company, which is brewery only hyped beer." And right. they're in the UK, and you can order these online. Uh, Craig, I say this from the bottom of my heart. Fuck you. I love you, but fuck yeah, you. Nope. Also, <laughs> second that. <laughs> buy it all. Like just whatever you can afford, and within reason. Buy every single Vale beer because. How often do you see Val beers over there? And then definitely buy Crush. I know you've had Focal and Heady. But buy them again. You know why? Because they're really good. You want to drink them. Fantastic. So, yeah. Really I don't like you anymore. Pay them and send them to me. Better, better yet. <laughs> yeah, we're sending everybody. Man. <laughs> uh, Bob says he doesn't think he's seen Dundee Honey Brown for sale around here for 15 years. That's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a good time. Like lucky. Yeah, Billy says he used to get J.W. Dundee Honey Brown all the time in the nineties. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Yeah, in the nineties, late nineties, I remember that being actually quite huge. So I don't know what the frick happened. Uh, Earth says, "Funny you should mention that, Craig." And the bump says, "Hey, Earth." And Earth says, "Cheers, bump." And it's you know, high fives everywhere. And then and then and then Craig says, "Yo, Earth, cheers for the comments recently, bro." So Craig loving his comments. Uh, Billy continues with he's he gets J.W. Dundee Honey Brown here on the Dell. Mar, uh, Virginia Eastern Shore four years ago, but he has not seen it since. I'd say that's pretty much similar to me. I don't think I've seen it since like 2013-14. It's, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, and then Earth tells Craig, absolutely, my friend. In China, when you do a beer I'm familiar with, no wonder why you haven't been commenting on my videos. There's, you don't get Genesee. I'm sorry. That's, but but you, you're actually, I'm not sorry. You're actually probably happy about that. Um... Then Billy says, Joe, I would love to get some of the pilot batch from Genesee. We only get the larger, the light lager, the cream ale, and the ice beer. Yeah, I, I replied to all your comments today, Billy. Yeah, that's – it's crazy to me that – and I think Rod said the same thing. They only get the ice and the, and the cream ale, like one location. I thought everywhere Jenny distributed, you would just get their pilot batch stuff. I mean, it's, I know it's less than the big markets, but they brew a lot of it. So I'm surprised that you guys don't see any of it. Um. And then Billy says, a six-year-old beer, that's not right. Six months old, no problem, but six years, the liquor store distributes the brewery. Sam Adams has Yank distribution companies for that crap. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be yanking Brooklyn's distribution because that uh, <laughs> that bottle shop was selling it and all happy about it. And then he said he had one beer and a six-pack that was not sealed property. He, uh, properly. He contacted Sam Adams. They sent me a check for a six-pack. Awesome company. And that's good. That's good. Awesome. Service. Yeah. That's what you would expect from any big ma- um, craft beer company. Yeah. To make yeah. make it right. That's I mean, Eric's not asking for anything but a refund or maybe you know the ability to get another six pack that isn't <laughs> isn't six years old. Like that's all he's asking. <laughs> not like he wants a bunch of. He just just replace it. Just refund me slash replace it. One of the two. Yeah. They can't even respond to. Not that's a hard shit. at all. Yeah. But we're all caught up on comments. Couple comments. Okay. So. Talking uh, American craft beer, uh, we get some of the stats and some of the facts out there. So going into this year, small and independent U.S. craft brewers growth as of the end of 2017, 62, 66, 6266 U.S. operating breweries now. Growth has been huge. When you go back and you look at 96, 
compared to what it is to 2016, the growth is pretty much astronomical in this chart I'm looking at here. Um, you look at just being at 1996, it was just over 3,000. So 20 years later, now you're about doubled it or so. Um, 2017 volume share for craft brewers is now at 12.7%. So of course you still got the big boys running a lot of everything. 26 billion done in craft retail dollar value growth in 2017. And 2017 small brewing jobs accounted for 135,072. So it's still making some inroads out there and everything. And it seems like there's still some spots for it to go. I think there's some pullbacks taking place out there off of some of the macros because you're seeing some of their numbers are down and craft is picking it up. And it'll just determine how many of the craft ones are actually left after a point, I'm sure. But yeah. still still some good stuff happening. Um, mm -hmm. That breweries are finding different things. Breweries are creating new hops or doing different things along those lines that I don't know. Like a lot of people are worried about if we're going to have a bubble pop or anything like that. But I think there's still some growth left in what they're doing. Um, yeah, I think you're seeing a little bit of the, the bubble pop, but then there's growth in other areas. So it's kind of offsetting one another thing. I mean, like Green Flash, for instance, and things like that. You're seeing some of these bigger ones expanding too quickly and whatnot. But then, you, I mean, we're up to, what, 6,500 breweries and it's all these breweries opening and a lot of, lot of local breweries uh, in, like, my area in Buffalo. You've had, like, over the last five years, like, 20 open. So, yeah, yeah there's still room. Yeah, I think when you look at it, the bubble is kind of like, I think it's more of a contraction, you know, versus the bubble. Like if you go back to the 2000s when we had the tech bubble burst, you, know, you saw how that hit the market and you kind of dominate everything versus what we go through now up and down in the markets is more of a contraction. It's just, we're going to have some of that scale back type stuff. I mean, obviously Green Flash was a, a pretty good size hit. Um, you also had uh, Mendocino that had to close their doors. You had Smutty Nose take a hit there. So you've had some of the breweries take hits, but overall, as a total of everything, the growth is still moving forward. So I think some of those breweries just didn't adapt enough. They kind of maybe wrestled in their laurels and didn't prove enough to match the trends that take place and what people were looking for. And you get left behind because of that. So as Joe would say, sometimes that's on you. That's on them. Also, cheers, <laughs> cheers to Craig. Uh, he's going to bed. So take it oh, easy. cheers, Craig. Yeah, Chris is over in the UK, so over there, he's five hours ahead of us. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's almost three in the morning. No big deal. Yeah. Um, but when you think about American craft beer, so what does it mean to you guys, American craft beer? What do you think of when you think of American craft beer? Fun. Happiness. Friends. I thought you were going to do Al Green's song there for a second. Nah. <laughs> I was about to bust into some Houdini. Why can't we be friends? Okay. Um, no, but... Uh, I, that's what I think about craft beer. I think about one of my favorite hobbies and just the amount of people I've met and just like doing something like this, just hanging out with people and having a good time. Um, it's probably become my favorite hobby over the yeah. past, at least the past three or four years. So uh, that's the first thing that pops to mind when I think about American craft beer, I mean, just be just enjoying it and having a lot of fun. Yeah. And then you got there, Todd. Yeah, I would say the same, you know, just enjoy, uh, you you know, especially doing this type of thing, you're meeting. I've met a lot of great people, including you guys, and you know, just it's fun. It's interesting to see what people's takes are on how they spin a particular style of beer and make it their own or whatever. You know, not every IPA is the same. Obviously, not every brown ale is the same. And it's just yeah, it's just great kind of a hobby to get into and, and just see what what's out there and, and to try all the different things. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's just it's, it's been pretty cool, really. So what do you what do you think of then as far as what do you consider an American craft brewery? Mm. Where's, where's where's your definition before I get into the Brewers Association? So yeah, fuck the Brewers Association, but I'm all right. The Brewers Association is all right by me. But fuck them. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> when I think about what an American craft brewery means to me, it's not founders because they're not craft technically. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, when you talk craft beer in the simplistic form, it's a brewery that uses, for the most part, um, real ingredients. They, they, it's, when people are like, oh, everything, I mean, even the back row beers are hand, technically handcrafted and whatnot. They just have, they're just using sometimes shittier ingredients, cheaper ingredients. But for me, American craft is just 
a quality product, something that is going to taste good, or at least I'm going to enjoy innovation. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Like I don't, I don't always pit it between like craft and macro and stuff. But for me, if someone says it's craft beer, then it's probably well-made. It's probably um, a lot of love put into it. That's pretty much all I think about when I think about craft beer, you know, yeah. nothing too crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, to me, it's it is a it is what it is. It's a craft. To me, it's something that, say, like the yearly beers, and one that comes to mind for me is the Sam Adams Oktoberfest or Pumpkin Ale, whatever they call it. That to me always tastes different from year to year, and even though they're on a large scale, and you may not, you know, you know they're technically, I guess, by the Brewers Association, still craft craft brewery. To me, that makes a craft because it isn't the same year in, year out, like your uh, macro type beers that are using the same, you know, mass produce billion, billion cans a day or whatever it is they make. You know, that to me is not <laughs> Your math may be slightly off, Todd, but we don't exactly that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Never take a few cans, you know. I mean, yeah, I was pretty no. close. I think. Couple, couple hundred million this way, couple hundred million right. that way. It's all the same. Yeah. You know, it's going to your local micro brewery that's got maybe three taps, four taps, little ten gallon batch stills, whatever they're making their beers in. You know, that, that's craft. You know, it's. You know, I like the I like the idea of most of these that keep things local and and give back to the community and doing the. Yeah. You know, I think that plays a little bit into it too. I'll say like a founders, you know, to me that that's, you know, technically not, but to me that they're still, they do enough stuff from a yearly basis that you can tell a difference in it. To me, it's still, I would think craft beer. And, and the word I would use to just real quick, Rob, before you say what you, what you see you, but uh variety is a great word to use because I feel like when I, when you're talking about craft, I know there's a variety of different beers I can get under the craft umbrella where macro, not so much pretty much yeah. similar. So great point. That's a great point. Yeah, I think I think all the those stuff play into it. I think it's the quality. It's almost like when I think of a craft brewery, I think of somebody that's putting their their heart and their soul into the beer to make like a quality type product. Something that kind of stands out, a little bit different. Um you're following all the stuff to make the beer, obviously, but it's kind of just more of a non mass produced, like we're trying to sell to everyone. It's kind of like they have a vision of what they're doing. They're trying to craft for a certain area or a certain ideal type beer drinker, things along those lines. Um, when you look at the definition, for those that don't know, the American Craft Brewery, annual production of 6 million barrels or less, approximately 3% of U.S. annual sales. Um, the beer production is attributed to the rules of alternating proprietorships, independent, less than 25% of the craft brewery's owner control. I have an issue with that part of it mm -hmm. um, by a beverage alcohol industry member that itself is not a craft brewer. And then they look at it thirdly as traditional, a brewer that has a majority of his total beverage alcohol and beers whose flavor derives from traditional or innovative brewing agreement, agree, and ingredients and a fermentation, which is another one. And it's kind of an issue. And they say flavor malt beverages are not considered beers. So two of the things, well, three of the things actually. So you had small annual production under 6 million, but everybody knows they moved it from 2 million. So you keep Sam Adams in. So you're kind of fudging out what you think is someone should possibly be under. And in a way you may be penalized in some from success. You look at the independent part, less than 25% owned or controlled by a beverage alcohol industry member. Is that member only infusing them with money so they can open up more channels and distribution? Should they be penalized for that? Um, if they still have a majority of control of 75%, shouldn't they still be kind of in that bracket? Or can that number actually be higher to where as long as they hold at least a majority of 51% of the company, maybe that 25 is off. Now, I've talked to breweries in the past, and some said like around 25 or 30 is where cost controls become an issue. That may be the case. I don't brew at, at a brewery like that, but it's kind of like a, Weird number. This one with twenty five is kind of like the whole number. It's kind of like if someone says you'd rather have seventy five, or if you're a hundred or hundred and five. Like people use round numbers a lot. I guess what I'm trying to say. It's yeah, kind of yeah. weird. They just came up to twenty five, and then with traditional in itself, I have a problem with the phrasing of it because it says to use traditional or innovative brewing ingredients. Well, if it's not traditional, then wouldn't it be innovative? 
Because it wasn't traditional, so they changed it up. To make it. So it was kind of like a catch-22 type thing. So that's how kind of the Brewers Association lays it all out there. And I think that's what causes them issues, how people recognize these breweries. And obviously the big thing they're doing now is they're pushing a the whole – independent label portion right so i think that's going to be kind of their out just to kind of say well, we're independently owned but then again what is that to make it independently owned is it still under that 25 percent, or is it under that 50 percent that a person has it's just it's still a lot of gray area for a lot of people now people will look at the brewers association because they're kind of seen as the biggest legislative group or body of breweries so they want them all to make the call or whatever kind of thing, but there's no really accepted general practice. And I think that's what those people off on it. That's my point. That's what I was saying. That's the breakdown of the brewery. Welcome, Eric. Welcome to the party. What's up, Hello, Eric? Jets? <laughs> and I don't know what your guys' feedback are about the Breweries Association and how they define craft beer, but feel free to- My cat agreed with you for a moment there. Even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's like, just, I know. That's some bullshit. Yeah, he came in and he was like, ah, ah, yeah, pieces of shit. Ah, ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, <clears throat> I don't care about the Brewers Association. I don't say that in any other way than I really don't. I just don't. A lot of their stuff seems very arbitrary. Right. You know, like the amount of uh, barrels you sell to be considered a macro. And I didn't like the fact that they bumped up the numbers back in the day when they did for Sam Adams. That seemed like bullshit to me. Um, well, supposedly, historically, they've only moved the lines twice. I don't know what the second time was, but the one time was for Sam Adams, and they moved it to $6 million. Yeah. So if anybody else knows what the other time was, please free to chime in or comments or whatever. I've never been able to find out what the other time was they moved it. Yeah, I didn't like that. Well, that's like the whole, whole deal in the, with founders and the percentages there. I, right. to me, they're still a craft brewery. I don't care if 30% is owned by you know somebody else or whatever the breakdown is. Yeah. To me, it just helps them get distribution a little bit more in the country than get into more hands. Right. Maybe they can maybe they can brew more. Well, obviously, they're brewing more because I think now back with bastard is. Uh, I mean, think of all. Think of the beers that Lagunitas does, right? How many good beers that they put out? A lot. But technically, yeah. they're not a craft brewery because they're owned by Heineken. And it's kind of like you cannot taste their beers and say these are not good crafted beers. Exactly. Listen. And, and, that's, and that's a prime example. That's a prime example. And when all things are equal, I will always pick the smaller independent brewery. Mm. But I, in the grand scheme of things, I don't care uh, as long as um, I enjoy the beer. Like, that's the thing. I mean – you can apply it to so many other things in life. And I always, I've always make the, um, you know, comparison to like fast food or whatever. And right. you know, I mean, so many people get caught up in it. Look, I, I think we all, anybody watching the show probably drinks craft beer more than macro and that's their favorite. I think when push comes to shove and all things considered equal, you would go with the craft brewery. Right. But, um, I, the Brewers association, I get it. I mean, it's made up of whatever, like right. All the heads of some of these bigger companies, like, Sam Caligioni and fucking uh, Jim Cook and all those guys. And I, that's fair because they, they've had a lot of things to say and they've they played a huge role in this movement for, you know, 30, 40 years. But it's kind of just weird that they have so many arbitrary numbers and arbitrary ways of thinking that I think for the most part, you should let the consumer think for themselves. I don't like when when places you know try to lie to the consumers. Like you, you had the whole lawsuit with Blue Moon, and them saying they're a craft brewery and they're really not, and blah blah blah. That's one thing, but I, I I don't know. I it's one of those things where if I enjoy the beers that I enjoy, I enjoy them. I don't really care if a macro company makes them. I don't care if an independent brewery makes them. I will always pick the independent over craft when all things are considered equal. But at the same time, I will drink macro stuff if it's good. Like so many people will be like, I will never buy Goose Island, right? I'll buy the shit out of Suburban County. Oh, I know. Some people, yeah, you'll, you'll see some of those people in the Suburban County line with a little mask over their face. Like, yeah. Didn't you say you weren't buying Goose Island? Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or the people well, that Except eat. for on Black Friday. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, I and, and, and that's not an exaggeration. I've seen like a half dozen people that I've seen on BeerTube and I've seen in real life that will say like, I don't buy Goose Island products. And then on Black Friday, they're the first ones like, oh, I have, I got six or eight bottles because I went to seven different stores. I don't think you buy Goose Island. Well, <laughs> make the exception for Bourbon County. Then you buy Goose Island. But you don't know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is everybody's different, right? 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the thing. It's kind of like don't sit there and say you're not going to do something and go out and do it. I just I've never been a fan of hypocrisy, and it happens in the craft beer world like it does in other parts of society. And it's kind of like, dude, just don't sit up there and like. I don't. I don't really come in. I, I tease and stuff about macros, but I'll drink macros here. Now I'm not going to say I'll never drink a macro type thing. We just did the Paps APA earlier, but some people will swear this and swear that, and then you catch them out there drinking something else like this. Or or the people that get be, become incredulous that um like a brewery uh, is you know looking out for their bottom line. They're a business. They want to make money because they want to survive and like provide their family with like meals and houses and ways to live and you know yeah. that's how this world works yes it's great that you think about the beer as you know the beer and you should always respect it but at some point like it's a business they need to make money like that's right. how it works that's how any business works you you need the money and uh yeah some of them go a little bit overboard and you see a lot of these places charging exorbitant amounts of money and kind of forgetting about the consumers. But I feel like a good craft brewery can provide their consumers with great beers at a reasonable price and still make a lot of coin. Yeah. Well, it's like one of the groups here. We'll bring Eric in here in a second. But one of the groups that me and Eric are in, craft beer lovers, these guys go fanatical over stuff. So it's kind of like someone posts something out there. Or they'll post Lottie Cool. Well, you know that's not a craft beer. And it's like the whole group is not. it was more defined to – talk about craft beer from when I've talked to the person that runs the group, because he won't really specify like if you have to only show craft beer or talk about craft beer, but it's like craft beer lovers, so people like craft beer, but you may drink other things. And if people post stuff, his thing is saying, well, maybe point them into the craft beer type direction. But there are some people that just like flip out. Like you put a listing out there, just like, holy shit, I don't care how good space dust is. That's not craft beer. And it's like, Dude, calm down. And, 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 and sorry, I just want to say this one thing because I'm old and I'll forget. But uh, it's just like that. And any, like, it's like someone, like, what are they going to slap a fucking Big Mac out of your hand because you should buy the, the local, the local burger joint? It's like, dude, drink and enjoy what you like. That's the, that's the basis of everything in life is drink what you like, uh, eat what you like, dress how you like, watch whatever entertainment you enjoy. Do what Everybody, you like. Yeah, do what you like. Everybody is different. Do what you like. yeah. Everybody has different taste buds. Just, <laughs> just how the world works. So that's the one thing that honestly, this is the one thing that bugs me about craft beer as a whole. People take it and put it on this pedestal, something way different than any other hobby or industry. It's not. It's just we love craft beer, so we right. look at it with like fucking rose colored glasses. I'm like, this is here's craft beer and ever here's our other the ho hobbies are way down. No, they're not. It's just we put them on that pedestal. Because it's our favorite hobby, or you work in the industry, but at the end of the day, it's no different than somebody who likes collecting cameras, Nick, or somebody who <laughs> likes um, music and they have a music uh, channel and they 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 have a music vlog. It's all the same, except for that it's just an alcoholic beverage. That's all it is. Right. People need to settle down. All right, sorry, Eric. Go ahead. Let's God go. forbid you put Miller Lite on one of those sites. It, it's like the world came to an end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, let's welcome in Eric from Eric and Lions Fan. What are you drinking, everybody? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm drinking a Bell's Oberon. Overrated. Oh, nice. What's that? Don't have to say it. Nothing. Is that a weak Your other half. Is that American <laughs> Palomino? Well, this might be considered the Bud Light of the craft beer industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's definitely one of my day. favorite pale weed owls. I love Oberon every year it comes out. So. I remember when Eric didn't believe there was an American pale weed owl. I was like, shut oh, up. You're so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> really? I, I was like, hang on now. Hang on. There's Oberon and there's Gumball Head from Three Floyds. This <laughs> kind of style. But he's like, this is kind of tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so we converted him to the pale weed owl style. <laughs> now he believes A, it actually exists, and B, he enjoys it. So it looks it more now, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, as far as this means it's a good segue there. Should, should, I, should I read comments because they're a lot, or do you want to just go? Around? Oh yeah, hit the comments. What the comments? Oh, will come okay, I'll try to read them quickly because there's there's quite a few actually. Jesus, it's uh, <laughs> it's 14 people watching. Jeez, Christmas was well, down um, for 45 last week. Yeah, well, 14 is still pretty fucking high. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> um, back Where's our German friends? Where's our German friends? I know. Back... Where's our German boys at? <laughs> Eric Backwood Billy what really wants you to hit up a bunch of different people to get your refund. Well, Billy's really fired up, Eric. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, um, yeah, he's all about it. He's like, you better get your money. Um, Brandon get Garrett. Get your fucking money back. <laughs> Brandon Garrett shows up and says, backwards Billy. Sam Adams is great. Too bad they fell flat on their uh, New England style IPA. And then he responds with Brandon. As of yet, I've not had the New England style IPA from Sam Adams. 
heard great things about it. Sorry you didn't like it. I think Rod and I can jump in because we've had it. We've had it, yeah. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like that. And then I like New Belgium. And then I like uh, Sierra Nevada. It's a three yep. big that do it. Yeah. That's yeah, a I, great. The next comment from Brandon is Backwoods wasn't terrible at all. Surprised that the New, uh, New Belgium blew them away for me. I thought they were kind of neck and neck. I thought personally the Sierra Nevada one was the worst of the bunch by far, like not yeah, comparable. Not three. Her. Yeah, I, but I, it's awesome to see Sam Adams in New Belgium producing a uh, – doing a solid IPA, IPA at like a, a good price too. I mean, that's the, that's the good thing about it. Um, he also says here on the Del Mar, Virginia, Eastern Shore, a few good New England style IPAs. Uh, beer style is equal to better than Treehouse, he says. is Hetty Topper, uh, Lord Hobo, Revelation Craft Brewery, Small Ro, Rehoboth uh, Beach Brewery, Two Bronze Medals. Uh, and then he says, Great American Beer Festival. I don't know. Maybe that's the first thing he thought when he says, thinks about an American beer. Um, then he continues with Revolutions. Conan the Juice Man is awesome. Telltale's Brewing Company's Big Juicy Secret. The Juice is Loose. Mother Juice. Talking about a bunch of local stuff that he can get that he enjoys. I wonder. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was, going to, I was going to. I wonder what Billy thinks of the. Uh, I almost picked up the Heavy Seas. Um, oh, he loves it. IPA. I haven't had it yet, and I, then I found out they had Hepper. I got that instead. But I wonder what Billy thinks of the Heavy Seas because he's right down there with him and DJ in that area. Yeah, yeah. Let us let us know, Billy. Um, Earth says it's a lifestyle. I think he's talking about again what craft beer means to him. Yeah, uh, and I'd agree. It's it is a lot. It's like I said, it's my favorite hobby. As a lot of things revolve around it. it multiple shows i joined on youtube obviously having a beer tubing channel and just it's it's a lot of fun it'd be, it'd be a lot of good people uh ashley sexton is here he says good evening gents good evening mm -hmm. um billy says dewey beer company out of dewey beach they have a juice bomb brandon garrett says true story on the founders mentioning that they're technically not a craft brewery anymore mm -hmm. uh backwards billy they says still make good stuff they do yeah, I mean, well, they I mean, do. Alice Point isn't either, but people still love Alice Point. Too. Fuck Alice Point. Yeah, no, they're all right. Uh, <laughs> third... <laughs> he says Third Wave has some good beer, but their uh, NEIP was like sour cream and gravy thickener. That sounds Ooh, fantastic. A, can I put a pork chop in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, that would be pretty Everybody good. That baby in a bird. Right, dip some bacon in that song again. <laughs> yeah. Brandon Garrett says he chooses independent craft over macro owned. Yeah, it's all the, for me, it's, and I think for everyone here, it's all things considered equal. Like you would, if if you had the same everything and it was independent owned versus macro, I think we'd all choose the independent owned because yeah, you would, Why would support like local, local independent. Or, and, yeah, yeah, because yeah. local keeps that money in the community type thing, and of course, an independent helps a small brewer. But yeah, but, but do not. And here's my thing, and people can disagree with it, but do not blindly support local beer. No, there's some. It's not good. Not as, I mean, I just did the one, and Joe, you commented on it. The uh, the white birch. It was okay, yeah. but it wasn't a great one. I could get a better deal for what I got, but it was a, you know, it was a craft brewery for what, you mm -hmm. know, so. And as, you have to enjoy it. It has to be good. Just, you just yeah. don't blindly support stuff. Oh, and me with that morning nightcap. Yeah. Yeah, from my Arcadia. That was all bitter. Good times. I couldn't even or taste that, the coffee. That six, or that six-year-old Brooklyn. Yeah, that's <laughs> not uh, <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up again, Ron. We'll never not bring it up, Eric. Uh, <laughs> Billy says craft beer has several definitions to him. It's like a custom house versus a cookie cutter house. Craftsmanship, better ingredients, take pride in your craft. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Ashley says, to me, craft beer is a small locally owned brewery that serves its local population and is content on crafting great quality products. That's a good definition, yeah. For sure. Uh, Billy says a lot of craft breweries are about the money first. Get to as many markets as possible. I personally like the smaller breweries. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of these. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna call them out just because I don't know. I, I just it just popped to mind. But that decadent, decadent ales. Uh, uh, look, no, I, they make good stuff. But like, there's supposedly a nano brewery in like Rhode Island or something, and all of a sudden they're in Oregon, they're in Kentucky, they're in New York, they're all over the place. And it's like, wouldn't you try to like? Do your local market first. Doesn't seem like they did. Seems like they just went big first. And luckily they make good beer. But if they didn't, a lot of people would be probably angered about that. Well, I think sometimes though with the smaller ones, because we do have the rise, like I mentioned the number of the craft breweries out there, there are some that do target market. There. Like Cincinnati is the seventh biggest beer drinking city now, according to check-ins from Untapped. So if you're doing marketing, you would love to get in that market because you know people are trying different beers. Yeah. So that could be a part of it on what they're doing. If they're not getting as much action that where they're at, although I think you're 
stupid to neglect your backyard because you probably yeah. have to be there just to be getting it first, but maybe there's just something there. Um, yeah, spot on. I mean, I, I do agree. It is. It's, they're just weird because, like, they went to, from zero to hundred real quick. Yeah. And uh, oh, they, oh, a little Drake action. Yeah, a little Drake action. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I know that, but it happened. But uh, yeah, he. Uh, it, it, it's just like they. I didn't see any reviews, and within like a four to six month period, like everybody has their stuff. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Brandon Garrett says Yingland is independent. Yeah. yeah, they are. They're craft brewery by definition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bum says craft beer is beer made by people who are obviously looking to make a profit from it, but for whom profit was not their original primary intent, which is pretty true. I mean, I'd say the vast majority of craft beer uh, companies, a lot of them start as home brewers or had a passion about beer itself, and, yeah. it, and it just evolved into an actual company. Uh, but nowadays, I will say this with this caveat, nowadays there are a lot of people that see craft beer being hot. So a lot of businessmen are trying to get into it to get a piece of the pie. Right. And you see a lot of these, these breweries that start out and like they're big flashy and have everything, you know, basically handed to them because they have money behind them. But the beer is like secondary to that. Yeah. Uh, you and see that, more and more of that now. And I know some of the breweries uh, that I've spoken with that there are some that are in it to build it up and then they want to sell it off at a point possibly too. So they are, there is a business thing, but I've also known some like, and unfortunately, this is probably the downside of why we lost one of the breweries we had here, Blake Slate Brewing, where he was more doing it for the love of beer. He left a nice job that he had because he had a dream of starting a brewery. He had it running for five years. He asked anybody about their beers. People seemed to love it, but he didn't get enough out of it. He didn't push it enough. He didn't market enough, whatever happened. I mean, he's a head brewer now over at Mad Tree doing stuff, but um, – if you don't pay attention to that money side of it, it's going to catch up with you. As you well. got you to have, have the, the business. Balance. Yeah, you got to have a balance between the business and the love. And it's like you can't just make awesome beer and not and neglect the rest. You, it's yeah. it's it's a it's a company. You got to make money, and that's the bottom line. I mean, there's still a lot, still a line from Joe Dirt. Maybe one day you yourself will get into the brewery business. But it's still there. <laughs> we just quoted Joe Dirt, not Rock Bottom, because I actually like that movie as well. Um, Billy says, according to the American Brew Association, craft can be local, can be distributed across the world, can be smaller, can be larger. They have set barrel limits, but move them from year to year. And I'm okay with them moving the limits because clearly as, as more breweries uh, get into it and as they expand stuff, you have to. I just will always have the problem with them moving it specifically for Sam Adams that one year. That was horseshit. Yeah, that's the only time I've heard them actually move it. Unless they mm -hmm. have moved it the other time was the second. They only changed it. They only changed it twice. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe the other time was a movement as well in barrels. But I know the one the last time it went from two to six. Hmm. You Sam Adams. Well, Sam Adams is kind of bucking that number now. So guess what? Are you going to move it again, or it's like Sam Adams? You got to go bye bye. Yeah. I. <laughs> I will see. I guess right. Yeah. Um, Randall Slider says hello, everyone. Enjoy your beer. Thanks, Ooh, Randall. Randall. I think Randall uh, snuck in when the Germans raided us last year, which was or last week, which was pretty fantastic. Well, great, great. Yeah. So I think you might be a returning viewer. Let us know if you were Randall, if you, if you came in, uh, if you're from Germany or you're German yourself, because I'd be interested. Because obviously last last week was crazy. Um, Brandon also says, Rajay, I missed the first part. Are you going to review that Hemperer? I will do a review on the Hemperer. I kind of talked about it in the beginning, but yeah, I'll do a review as well. I got a six pack, so I got something laid back. So I'll, oh, I'll do it. I, probably, I might move that up and do it sooner rather than later because it is a hot beer out there now. So it's not yet. Yeah, I've got so many damn things in the log. I got like 30 beers in the log right now. It's like it's Christmas. I like, I just, my, next, my next upload, that's how much my log is back. My next upload is the CBS that Eric sent to me when I shot that back in a while oh, ago. I'm going to upload that tomorrow. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, Wow. Okay. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> Tim, 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 <laughs> Bruce, yeah, no, Tim Bruce says I would rather make my own my taste better. And so a lot of a lot of homebrewers like to do. They they can brew whatever style they want and use any ingredients they want and make it to their taste. That's that's why you get into homebrewing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Billy says to me, if a macaroon makes a good beer, I'll drink it. I he like Shock Top, Blue Moon, Land Shark, Goose Island, Paps, Miller High Life, Miller Light. Settle down, Eric. Uh, Michelob Ultra, Bud Light, <laughs> Platinum, as well as local. And that's the thing. Drink what you like. You like what you like. End of story. Yeah. Uh, and Tim also says it's cheaper to do homebrewing. That's another, another thing. You can it brew what you cheap. want. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if it's always – like it depends on what you're drinking, though, right? Like if you're a macro drinker, like it'll tell you like enjoy a homebrew. If you're a macro drinker, don't brew. Go buy at the store. 
because yeah. you're not going to beat the price value of it unless you want to make your own beer and say, I've made something. But if you're a crap beer drinker, it pays off more dividends to you. Yeah. Mine was a big ass yeast bomb when I tried to do it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Part of the learning process. Yeah. Um, Billy says he likes home brewing, but he has uh, trouble finding time. And then Tim yeah. says he works seven days a week, but he finds one day here and there he can do it. And yeah, that's the thing. And it's all, I mean, how much you enjoy it. Like, I think if we all had time and the knowledge and whatnot, we'd probably all homebrew because, yeah, you can brew what you like and it's cheaper and whatnot, but not all of us have the time or really the want to, uh, you know, do it. So yeah. it, it all depends on what you said. <laughs> now, back with that, he goes, different taste, Joe? Kind of like the New York uh, journey, uh, general attorney that was charging Weinberg. The DA won an award for protecting women. From a woman's group one week later, he was accused of sexual assault. <laughs> Racism and being a dominator abused women. SM, you got to love the poetry of this LOL. <laughs> That's a good turn. <laughs> that totally happened. That totally happened. Um, and he says, Joe, my meaning is the gravy thickener was bad. Yeah, no, we, we figured when you said sour cream and gravy thickener. Yeah. <laughs> but would it be good with bacon? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you, could, you, could, you could cook with it. That's about all you could do. It usually makes everything better, I'm just saying. Yeah, and then the last couple comments are from Billy. He says, these companies are small that go big fast, getting into a ton of markets, usually sign with AB InBev, Molson Coors, Boston Beer for distribution. It means contract room to keep up the demand. And uh, yeah, he says, yeah, Tim, I have, a, I have to do a dandelion beer this year, a dandelion IPA. Ah, interesting. That's interesting. And we are all cut up. Yeah. On the comments. Yeah, that's the other part too, where some of these sign on, for instance, like I brought up this point before, is if they didn't sign on, would you be tasting some of those beers? I mean, them signing on was able to bring like a Lissy in, so I was able to try that. It also brought a 10 barrel, which I wasn't a huge fan of. But you know, you're trying different ones you weren't getting before because of them actually signing on. Um it's a show <laughs> What are you trying to do? There's a lump in the bottom of my glass from the, the yeast <laughs> and, the, and the hops and part. There's seriously, it's like it looks like a huge like seed, and it's in the bottom of my glass. They're like, "What is Joe trying to do?" Is no, I, yeah, yeah. Was was weird. Weird. <laughs> weird. Um, other craft brewery quick hits: craft brewers are small brewers, very small. More than eighty percent of adults of legal drinking age live within ten miles of a brewery. They actually have a brewery finder you can actually use on craftbeer.com. The hallmark of craft beer and craft breweries is innovation. Craft brewers interpret historic beer styles with unique twists and develop new styles that have no precedent. And the Brewers Association currently recognizes more than 150 beer styles. Many of today's craft brewers also stray from brewing to style from brewing the style completely. This is what makes their craft brew beers so interesting. So they're not sticking to style, they're kind of putting their own twist on it. Which brought me to another segue then. So are there any American craft beer styles that you guys actually like that are some of your favorites out there? Like, you know, New England IPA. Um, I think it's like the hoppy, the hoppy weed ales. That's kind of an American thing they're doing. Hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I go New England style. I do IPAs in general. Uh, if I yeah. do a sub style, it'd be New England style, but uh, Imperial Stouts, I love. Um, Barrel aged imperial stouts, barley, uh, English barley wines. So we talked about the English versus the American and the Pabst review, but uh, English barley wines for me are more of my jam than American barley wines. I don't like my barley wines really hop forward. Uh, but I also am really getting to kettle sours. Like I like Berliner Weisses and Gozas. Um, mm. I just like the simplicity of it. Like I, it, they're not overly sour most of the time. A lot of times they introduce fruit or they're dry hopped. So. It's like a perfect summer crusher or springtime. So right. I don't know. It, it 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 changes for me. Like every couple months, there's a style that jumps to the forefront. And I'm like, I'm really into this. And then something else happens. And I mean, if you would ask this question five years ago, it'd be completely different answers. So yeah. it's it's whatever I'm, I guess, I'm in the mood for, whatever my palate, my palate dictates what I want to enjoy, I guess. And everybody's palate is, you know, different, but it's also constantly changing. So. Well, some of the more common American beer styles include the American Lagers, obviously, American Adjunct Lager and Imperial Pilsner. You have the Cream Ales, which I know Joe's Cream Ale. Eric loves Adjunct Lagers as well. Blonde Ale, American Hefeweizen, and Steam Beer, California Common. American Pale Ale, American Red Ale, Session IPA, American Brown Ale, American IPA, Double IPA, Black IPA, White IPA, Belgian IPA, <laughs> Imperial Red Ale. 
You already said like New England IPAs, IPAs in general. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was like the English IPA and everything else is American. <laughs> so those are kind of some common beer styles out there. I mean, I was for me, I think I like a lot of the the barrel beers, obviously. Um, I'm a big fan of bourbon, so a lot of that barrel age type stuff I usually get into as well. Um, the IPAs, you know, my three favorite styles, I mean, one is an American, that's Belgian, but then you have the IPAs, which most of the stuff I drink is usually American IPA. And then um, stouts as well. I get a lot of the well, American stouts, Ralph, barrels. When you say Belgian, now Belgian encompasses a bunch of different styles. So, what what is your one go to Belgian style? I mean, you can go from triples to quads to doubles to pallets to, to strong darks to uh, the, there's a lot of them. So, what what is when you say Belgian specifically? What is the specific style that you enjoy from from Belgium? Well, if you ask me, like. A few years ago, my favorite Belgian would have been going to drop nine thousand. So that would have been a that would have been a quad on that one. But I like the Chimay triple. I like the doubles there. Um, I like a lot of the Duvel beers. I mean, if it's got a monastery on it, I'm probably drinking it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're just you're just a fan of Belgian. I'm just a fan Pretty of much Bel- brains, uh, more or less, is what you're yeah, a fan of. It's like you know. If you had to go somewhere for the rest of your life, be stuck in somewhere, and they said one of your choices is a monastery, I'd be like, yeah, because they make great beer over there. I'll go to the monastery. You know? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I'm, I'll be a monk. I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough, baby. <laughs> Nothing wrong with he. He's down with the monastery. <laughs> and then you got the American Wild Ale, right? So you're getting more of that stuff now because that's coming out of a lot of the sour type breweries as well. So, well, and then you have the American Sours type stuff. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's other styles you guys really enjoy or I like a good red ale, but they're hard to find. Yeah. And then a brown ale would probably be next. Well, no in particular order. It would be a brown ale. Because I like the kind of the, the walnutty, kind of the nuttiness of the the beer. And what about the what about the American strong ale? Do you like those? Have you had that one? I haven't had enough to really get a good handle on if I like it or not. Fuck the American strong ales. I say this. I say wow. this from, yeah, no, but I like really feel, Joe. Yeah, you know, but I say this from it is one of the worst styles. Well, you know what American like, strong ale is? It's just a barley wine light. Well, all it is is like we can't we can't uh, tell you what style it is, but it's strong and it's an American and it's an ale. So therefore, it's an American strong ale. That's what I hate about it. It's like. It can be a bunch of different things, but they don't know what it is. It's a strong beer. It's an ale. Oh, it's funny because they define it as American strong ale, mainly used as a catch-off for strong beers that don't fit in yeah. any yeah. style. Yeah, you're like much of the same heft and hoppiness as you would in a barley wine, but from there you're flying yeah. blind. Is it a barley wine? Is it an old ale? What is it? It's an American strong it's ale because we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I like the, I actually like the style. I just think the name's kind of just like lazy. It's like, ah, whatever. <laughs> What do you want to call it? American strong ale. Yeah, what is it? Fucking, what is it? Nine percent fucking strong. Is it an ale or a light? It's an ale. Okay. Oh, we're brewing in America. Because they have English strong ales too. They have English strong ales. It's the same thing. Right. For English strong ales. It's they basically don't know what style it is, but it's a strong ale. So I think Eric and Bastard might be American strong ale. Oh my god. I think it goes into that style. God damn American strong ales. I like a good Scotch ale too. I'm Ooh. starting to come around to them. We we have these. We have these. Scotty bourbon, the Scotty mm. bourbon barrel from uh, Dark Horse is really good. Baby, backwoods bastard is where it's fucking at. Backwoods I bastard, do, such do a, review, a good I beer. There too, I do a review on that. Oh, one. it's so good. I fucking love. Here's the thing about backwoods bastard too. I think I like it better than KBS. It, like, listen, I know apples and oranges, but like from just an enjoy enjoyment standpoint or whatever. And it's like half the price is KBS. Like you can buy a four pack for like twelve ninety nine. Yeah, and it's so damn good. Oh my god, such a good beer. I like a good porter too. Founders Porter. Yeah. The Founders Porter and the Edmund Fitzgerald from Great Lakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those two Black Butte from Deschutes is phenomenal as well. I yeah. didn't. I had one of those and I did not care for it. Eric, you're dead to me. <laughs> You got to be trying. You got to get central waters in your area. Eric, you yeah. probably do. They're out of Wisconsin. Have They're you had like their? Uh, I just started their uh, Scotch Ale. Yep, I've got one. I've got it in the uh, cellar. Oh, it's so good, so Dude, good. So is the uh, so is their stout. So is the barley wine, and so really? is. Yeah, everything I've had from them has been 
Fantastic. Buyers had them like right. clearance to like I, I can't even remember. I think a dollar ninety nine for a bottle. Oh my god, Eric just, Eric just got Rajay deal. Like I just heard a Rajay deal. From <laughs> what? what the hell? He's, he's learning. Gonna, he's gonna he's learning. He's gonna burst into flames right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. If I saw this for a buck nine nine, I'd probably buy at least a four pack of every single one of them. No doubt. That's crazy. Those beers are awesome. Central Waters Barrel Age program is fantastic. Well, is there like a, a favorite and a worst style you have? Because I got a feeling, well, Joe's not going to say Strong Yell is probably the worst one, but. No, no. I, I, listen, I just hate the name. I, I do enjoy the style. <laughs> Any yeah. kind of lager that gets above like 8 9% is just, it's junk. It you know what? Fun. I will say this. I will say this. Craft lagers are stupid for me. I feel like if you want to go get a regular, like the Founder Solid Gold, is it a good adjunct lager? Sure. But it's also way more expensive than than the regular um, adjunct yes. loggers. They're just yeah, they're, they're close. But like the Bell's Quinn and Falls, that's a logger, I believe. Yeah. That's not a bad one. Nah, I mean, that's, All right. that's your opinion, man. That's like your, that's your opinion. <laughs> no, I just I don't see the that's point. Not my own opinion because that's trademark by one. That, that's true. I'm not saying. Listen, when you say log, when I say craft loggers, there are a lot of styles in their loggers from box and doppel box and the whole pilsners oh, and stuff. Yeah. I'm just talking about a a brewery that says here's our craft logger that is meant to compete with an adjunct logger that's macro, like the solid gold and a couple other that have come out. I don't see the point of it. If I can pay fifty cents a can or a bottle for whatever that I enjoy, I don't want to pay a dollar because you're founders. Well, like, your, it doesn't make any sense to me. The founders is more now, not a craft and a macro now. Maybe if someone said, "Hey, we want you to make oh, it," oh yeah, there you the go. Yeah, push down on them. Maybe they don't oh, want to. All the make tacticalities, it. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were told to make it to compete against some of the other macro logs. Easy, Joe. Easy. The camera was shaking I'm a little bit, buddy. Hold on. Listen, I'm getting upset. <laughs> It's a cheaper product for them to make to go against some of those macros. It might not have been their decision. It may have been put down on them to do it that way. Well, that's why you don't sell out. I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just said, I would, you quote, I say, quote Joe Dirt again. They said, we only like sparklers. They sell us out. <laughs> no, there, is a, there is a one quote of Joe Dirt per show limit, and you have surpassed it. <laughs> No, no, I would say craft loggers uh, for me, but just like craft, craft base, like a mer like they're trying to go adjunct loggers to compete with them. I yeah. don't see the point. I don't really care for them. Um, I don't really. I, I would say every single style I can find a beer within that style I enjoy to a point. Yeah, I think the best way to go is what's your least favorite, as opposed to what ones you don't like. I mean, we talked about brown ales. Like brown ales, I don't seek out. I don't really. Unless they have ad like adjuncts like that are not corn and rice, but right. cocoa nibs, vanilla, or whatever. Like brown ales are just they're okay for me. Yeah, can't really think of too many. It's always, it's always shandy, but I don't know if that's really American or not. Yeah, uh, I just shandy's for. I'd actually, I don't know. Shandy and adjunct are close together. They're close together. Well, a lot of them are like made with adjuncts. The, the half the adjunct. beer. I could drink more adjunct type beers than I can some of the shandy beers. I got gotcha. you. So that makes sense. Like, okay, I, could so get that. I can appreciate like a good pilsner, but yeah. pilsners aren't a style that I gravitate towards. You know, it's not. It's not. I you won't see me drinking them, but I appreciate what they are. They're basically a step up from adjunct cloggers, more or less, right? They're made with realer ingredients and have a bit more hops for nature to the beer. But I don't really. That's not a style that I enjoy. That's, that's wrong with a good lager on a hot day, though. They go down really No, well. there's, there, I mean, there's a time and place for every beer and every style. It's just what do you prefer? Yeah. Um, I guess for me, it's it's beers. When you think about it, and I don't know how you if you guys agree or not, but when you think about adjunct lagers or you think about pilsners or you think about a lot of these beers that don't have an overabundance of flavor, they're not bold and in your face, they're very subtle and just – those are probably the styles that I don't gravitate towards because I don't drink. I don't drink a six pack every night. I don't. I don't need something that has drinkability. I drink a couple beers here and there, and I want big, bold flavors. And I want stuff that I enjoy. So there's a time and place for those beers, like you said. Hot summer's day, you could pound some adjunct lagers. Hot summer's day, drink the crap out of pilsners, uh, brown ales. Time and place for every style, every beer. For me though, I prefer the styles with more bold in your face flavors. So anything that's subtle or not that crazy. For me personally, it's just not, just yeah. not for me. Cool. Anybody else? Any comments on that? 
I like me some malt liquors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so come for the five. Any so comments? On, any comments on the board? You know. <laughs> um, Segue. Maybe. Uh, we have Bum who says those modern day opportunistic craft brewery owners you mentioned are all ex beanie baby <laughs> beanie baby dealers from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. That totally does. Um, <laughs> that's actually a good analogy. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, Tim's Brew says Oktoberfest is his favorite or his best. A little more zen action. Carson. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yes. Billy has a lot. So really quickly go through me. So New England style IPA, Hoppy Brown Ale, West Coast IPA, Cream Ale, Dessert Stouts, American Stout, Porters, Pumpkin Ales, uh, Del Mar, Virginia Pilsners. Uh, fruit IPA, coffee porter, barrel aged beers, sours, Belgians, and triples and quads. So yeah. He's, he, yeah, he's, he's a lot of favorites. Then he also says, Yeah, Tim, Oktoberfest, also Snorter Porter's Pumpkin Ale, barrel aged pumpkin ale. I had not know. That sounds interesting. Maybe uh, uh, local. And then he says, For Eric specifically, Tall Tales Brewing Company's Red Heaven Stepchild, a red ale. Awesome. Uh, Tim says he's drinking it now. I don't know what he's drinking. Maybe an Oktoberfest that he that he brewed. Um, and then Billy says, "Cool, Tim. I've been on a Genesee Lager kick lately. Craft beer, wise sours, and New England style IPAs this past week." And then he says, "Actually, it costs more to brew a lager than an ale, guys." Yeah, I mean, yeah, lagers are you gotta gotta wait quite a while for them. Um, Eric Gilbert says, "Yay! Finally got my shit done. Beer time and whiskey." <laughs> All right, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Malt Mustang shows up. Shout out to Malt Mustang. He says the three best beer styles: malt liquor, high gravity lager, and Valentine's XXXL. <laughs> <laughs> where, was, where was he last week? We had all the German people in. <laughs> That's hilarious. And Tim's Bruce says, "You don't drink the same beer all in caps." I don't know if that to me. <laughs> <laughs> if if it if it is to me, no, I don't. I uh. I usually just buy beers by the singles. If I do enjoy something, I will buy four or six packs of it. But there is just so much beer available now that I can go to the store each week and, and find 10, 15, 20 new beers every single week. No exaggeration that I've never had that I can try. So, um, yeah, I prefer to buy the singles when I can. I mean, especially yeah. when I find a place that I'm doing the upcharging, it makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I have I like I have one of my favorite nitro beers, uh, Left Hand Milk Stout Nitro. I have a four pack of cans in the fridge, and I've already drank a couple of them. So I do buy them, no doubt. But that is good. All, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Next month, I'll be buying six packs of Stone Mocha IPA when it comes out again. Yeah, I mean, we all. I mean, but as far as like you know, having YouTube channel uh, as far as like beer reviewing goes, I usually try to stick to singles and stuff I haven't had or stuff that I have and I know that I like or I think I will like and. You know, but I will have occasional four packs, six packs in the in the fridge. I just don't drink enough to for everything I buy buy a four or six pack. There's so much, so many new beers every week that like I don't need to do that. If I did, I would be a poor and be drunk all the time. I can't even keep up to speed on some. Of them. I mean, here where we've got like the sixty breweries, like on the Facebook page, I try to put new beers when they're coming out. Different. It's like can't even keep up to them. It's just like. Another one? It's almost like a, a, it's a pain now. There's another one coming out tomorrow? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we're not complaining it should, because that's fantastic, the, the sheer amount of uh, beers that are available. But for people, and, and again, this is this is specifically for people who review on YouTube. Yeah. I think I'm, sa I, I'm safe to say this. Correct me if I'm wrong. You guys feel free, except for Todd, who doesn't have a channel. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to reviewing beer and whatnot, you always, you always want to try something new. You're always looking right. for the next thing you haven't had. And you'll always pick that over something you have had before. And it's the allure of, will I like it? Will I try it? So on and so forth. And that's kind of the situation I'm in uh, and have been for a while. I mean, six, seven years ago, when I, you know, nine years ago, I first got into craft beer. But even up until like four or five years ago, you could walk into a local bottle shop and fill up like a six pack of beers that were new that week. Now that has basically tripled, at least doubled, tripled every week. You walk into, you need a case. You need like you need like a case holder or like multiple box to walk out with new beers. It's yeah. getting ex extremely difficult to keep up with everything that's released. There's so many breweries, so many new beers, so many of these companies always doing one offs and, and rotating specialties and seasonals that it's impossible. You have to pick and choose now. So that's what I'm trying to do. By the way, I'm going to kind of, oh. box. So <laughs> what's that? 
I'm gonna write the only one that walks out with a box. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> yeah. Where you gonna you're not you're not alone. <laughs> you start doing two a days, Rod, right, if you're gonna get three. <laughs> What were you gonna say, Todd? Though? No, I was gonna say, isn't it, it kind of a weird mindset? And I, I'm the same exact way. Is what's what's the point of trying one new beer to see if you like it or not? Chances are you're probably not gonna buy it again anyway. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you might at some point, but you want to try the next thing. It's new. It's just kind of a weird, like revolving door. It's, it's just, you know what I mean? Of, like it's it's kind yeah, of kind of odd. It's kind of like fast food, though. Like every single time a place comes out with a new fast food item, so many people want to try it. Yeah, you might go to this fast food place and maybe you have your regular or whatever, but if there's a new item, more people will try it than don't because like it's Bell. interesting. Yeah, like Taco Bell comes out. Taco Bell has their staples, <laughs> but like every month they have multiple things that are new and people are like, I gotta go try it. And I'm like, do you really though? Yes, I do. Okay. And then you go try it. And that's how we are with, with beer. It's like you there and so many beers nowadays sound interesting that it piques your interest. You're like, oh, I like that. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, and I'm not disagreeing with it at all because, like I said, I'm the same exact way. But it just seems like kind of an odd, weird, kind of mind, kind of, yeah, kind of an odd, weird mindset in general. Because like, oh, I'm gonna try something new. Okay, well, I probably won't get it again for another year. So, yeah. what, what difference does it make? You know, what I mean? common sense would dictate like, oh, you <laughs> like these beers. Why don't you just have those in the fridge all the time? And you could say to them, "You're right." <laughs> but, then I, but then I can't buy these beers. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Just think that exactly. I want, like, yeah, no, which, which is which is the hobby part about it. Like you said. Yeah. And yeah. It, in the end, it is kind of like a hobby. You want to try something new and see what else. And there's no wrong way to do it. or take is on a style. Yeah, and there's no wrong way to do it. Whether you buy new beers every time you go to store, or all you do is go buy your 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 reliable beers that you drink, or whether you do a mix of it. Again, just like we talked about earlier about drink what you like consume the products how you like be a consumer however you want i mean uh there are times where i go to the beer store and i come home with only a couple new beers and maybe like a four or six pack of something and other times that all i buy is brand new beer it all depends on my mood on what's available it's you know yeah it's fun though it's fun trying new beers that's what it comes down to it's fun trying new beers and part of the reason and i know i can speak on this for all of us part of the reason is the interaction with your friends and other people on the internet because they're trying something new. I mean, case in point, right now, Rod is drinking a new Belgian pepper, and there are a lot of people that are geeked about that, like wanting to try it, whether they're into marijuana or hemp for other reasons that are not smoking purposes, which I doubt, or whatever. People are interested. I guarantee when Rod posts that review, it's going to be one of his better viewed vid videos over the last couple months because people are pumped about it. They want to know what people think about it. So... When you go to the, the bottle shop and you see something that's brand new from a bigger brewery, sometimes maybe you don't want to buy it, but then you think to yourself, like, this is a talking point within the community right now. So I want to try it, but I also want to see what other people think about it. And, you know, I don't know. It's, again, to each their own. Consume it how you want. Well, you can do a, a macro lager, like a Coors Banquet or a Coors Light or Budweiser or something like that, and it'll, I, I'm, at least for me, my videos get like double or sometimes triple the views just based yeah. on just a macro. Yeah. No revisits though, Eric. No revisits. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> no revisits. Well, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, but, I'm, but no, it, it, you're, you're right. And the reason for that is because everybody can get those beers. Everybody has had those beers. And even though, let's be honest, everybody here has probably had a Coors Light or a Bud Light or a Budweiser or whatever. But it's still not going to stop you from kick, clicking on that video and being like, what does Eric Lyons fan have to say about Budweiser? <laughs> and since you've had it and it's readily available and it's cheap and you can get it, that's how people think. So you're going to, of course, you're going to get 100 views on that compared to, you know, 30 or 40 on your on your uh, craft beer videos. Mm -hmm. This is how it works. That's why a lot of people review the macro stuff. Uh, it gets a lot of views and a lot of people see it. So, I mean, I get it. <laughs> You got comments out there? Uh, yeah, a lot. What were you going to say, Todd? <laughs> Quick question real quick. More so for like Rod and Eric, since their channels have been on longer. Do you guys find more views on <laughs> – do you guys find your videos getting more views on stuff, say like it's a Founders or a Stone or something that's more readily available to everybody? I, I, get, I get some, yes. If it's like from a local brewery like Lansing or Bad, which is just down the road for me, there's not very many views on it, but if, like a Founders or a Stone or Bells, even to Shoots, it'll get more views. At least, at least that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't I don't get as much from well I don't do a lot of the the macro type beers on my channel, but let me see here. I was looking on my because you're right. a hater, Rock. Don't let it get twisted. I just, I've done I did a few before and I'm just not a huge fan of them. So it's kind of like I already go I'm gonna be going in at a lower level, but right now, outside of my one kind of superstar video, whatever the beer blizzard, which is like the big one. Here we go. He said superstar settle down. <laughs> well, it was like <laughs> the biggest ones of my buddies that I did it on were on Shark Tank, so that that helped it out as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's Hoff Pra original. Oh, really? That's the most viewed video. There you go. All the Germans from everywhere have come for multiple reasons. <laughs> but then after that is the uh, Sierra Nevada Harvest, and then I do get Natty Daddy after that. But then it becomes a Boulder Shake Porter, the Hop Brow Half of Eisen. Bitburgers climbed up recently. Yeah, um, because Germans checking the channel, checking out the yeah. video. But then I have like the uh, Blackberry Farm Saison, the Three Floyds Gumball Head, Gumball Head, World Brews Diesel Punk. Do not buy World Brews. I'm just telling you right now. Um, <laughs> Boiler alert. <laughs> well, now because they raised their another one, they raised their price. And like, your beer's not that good to be priced where you're at right now. So it all just depends. I mean, I get a lot of people that watch it because they like craft beers, but I get some people that watch like macro beers too. So. See, I like like Joe's segment on Wednesdays when you do the West New York. Yeah, beer. Sure yeah I, I kind of enjoy though. I know I can't get any of those, but I kind of like to see what people are getting in their area. You know, their local stuff. What they can actually, what they actually can try. I don't know why. I just kind of like those videos. Well, I know some people they they only watch videos for beers they can get. Yeah, I yeah. watch the videos because of people I like watching. So. Yeah. I watch their videos and there's beers I can't get. I mean, I may end up seeing their beer at some point, but I'm not going to just not watch because I, oh, I can't get that video. Why would I want to watch that? I still like to watch the entertainment of the people telling the story about their beer. And I like having the resources. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to is the, the, the person mm -hmm. that's actually doing the video is the content, how they, you know, represent it. And, yeah. You know, keep keep the story going, moving along or whatever, you know, the, not dragging it out and being long-winded or whatnot. Oh, what? <laughs> no, well, I mean, your videos are less. Your videos are less than ten minutes. So, I mean, oh yeah, they not, are. They're, I've I've gotten one or ten minutes. Of but I mean, <laughs> but you keep it interesting, though. You're not just like you know reading off the yeah. battle or off the website or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there, there's some that are just drug drug out, and it's like, yeah, okay. Right. What do you yeah. like? Okay, you like it. I'll fast forward, find out. <laughs> you got, got the Dave Chappelle. Wrap it up, B. <laughs> Wrap it up, B. <laughs> Wrap it up, B. <laughs> That, that's fantastic. I, you didn't ask me, Todd, because I clearly am, am new, but I will say this. I, out of my 20 reviews I have, number one, KBS. Number two, Jenny Cream Ale. Uh, so, like, clearly those are beers that people can get or are popular, so it makes sense. Number three is actually the French Toast Double IPA. It's over 80 views, and it's because it's an interesting sounding beer, a French Toast Double yeah. IPA. So, yeah, I mean, there's it, things pique people's interest, whether it's macro or something that's that's craft that everyone can get or has heard a lot about. Like, I'm surprised my KBS is like at 120 views, and I'm like, I only have 126 subs. Clearly, there's more people than just the subs watching. So, uh, you better repeat, repeat watchers because you're that yeah, good. They, they, <laughs> you need to watch any of my reviews more than. <laughs> but you know well, what? One nice. thing too that plays into it, and this is something like. I don't know if Joe picked up on it yet, but as he's starting out and everything, but you'll pick it up over time, and Eric may have too, but um, it's how you actually write things and how you actually keyword stuff too mm -hmm. that, I, that I went back and looked at. And the tags. Just, just me going back to some of the older videos and changing up some of the keywords. That's, like even before the – I don't know if that calls like when we had the uh, all the German drinkers come in last week, but I went back and I keyworded some of the Bitburger and some of the other beers, so they will pop up in more searches on stuff. So yeah. that also influences who shows up on your channel. I actually had to change. I had to put a couple new tags in there because people were spelling the Beer Patrol wrong. They were doing it without the extra L. Yeah. So like, if you search Beer Patrol right now with two L's, T R O L L, in uh, into you YouTube, it will ask say we're showing results for Beer Patrol with one L. Is that what you mean? Now I'm like, yes. That's what they meant. <laughs> and you'll be able to – my stuff should show up. But, uh, yeah, no, it's keywords, how you how you word it too. Like I, I noticed like uh, let's say you're doing, you know, Founders Kentucky Breakfast Out or whatever. If in the tag you put Founders KBS or Founders KBS 2018 or what, you will be – if people search for that, 
Yeah. If you tag it correctly, Founders KBS 2018 or Founders KBS, you'll be up there in the search. If someone's typing for Founders Kentucky Breakfast out and they spell it all out, and you don't have that as a tag, you'll be way down on the on the search. So, it, you yeah, you have to tag it correctly. You're only allowed whatever 25 tags, or, or the, the length is so much. But it's worth it to do as much as you can because if you want people to see your content, you got to think about everything how they're going to search it. If they're not sub to you and they're searching for KBS, some people might just type in the word KBS into the YouTube. Right. And if that's one of your tags, you'll show up more so than yeah. someone who doesn't have it. So uh, yeah. you just, you have to kind of also use common sense, but like kind of delve deep into if you were to search for this beer, what would you type into the YouTube search? Well, here's and, a, Or into Google. Here's the thing too. Like, um, as well it actually looks more at your description and looks more at your title are weighed heavily more than your tags are yeah so if you're writing the right description and your keyword and the right stuff there that's going to place it higher and if you don't have words in your description you're actually getting knocked down so like for me i save certain things in my description i make it a default because if you're not using tube buddy with youtube you should be because it makes it that much better for actually to use that or vid iq i actually have both of them set up to use that um when you actually do that that helps the search and it'll tell you ones and it'll tell you how your your tags actually rank and everything as well nice. so that you're able to actually know which ones are actually being the um not being seen out there so just some tips there <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to go to comments because Eric Gilbert uh, apparently wants me to read them because he uh, posted C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S <laughs> question mark. <laughs> Shingle, <laughs> <the C-O- laughs> listen, listen, Eric, we're trying to get to, uh, you know, I mean, just settle down. Wait a minute, I just saw Eric say, Mom, Mom, oh, get a mom, get a mom in. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> That's a mom, Eric. It'll be as his mom visit. We'll get Eric's mom in here. That's true, we will. Um, so we have... Uh, Brandon Garrett said good night, all cheers. So he's probably gone, but good night. Night, Brandon. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Uh, Eric says Omnipolo Zodiac and Overholt, I believe, is what he's drinking. He's in Ontario. Uh, Tim says that means the craft brewer has to brew different every time, right? No, not necessarily. I mean, that's that's the thing. It's it's funny because when we try new things, it necessarily doesn't have to be different every time. Uh, a lot of times seasonals especially are you know released once a year or maybe every couple, you know, twice a year or whatever. But the pro- like a, a brewery like other half, all they do is brew new beers. That's that's their whole thing. That's they brew new beers like every single week is a new release of something. They will once in a while, you know, bring back something that they brewed before. But yeah, a lot of breweries just brew the beers you else. sent me were outstanding from them. Oh man, yeah. they're so good. Yeah. No, they, then they do make good stuff, and it's why people want to drink them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. say they were off the hook. Maybe they were off the hook. Maybe. <laughs> they were off the hook. Billy says, I believe that it's nice to try new beers, but for daily drinkers, macro lagers. Personally, I could not see spending three to five a beer to drink daily. As a sipping beer, yeah, no problem. Four dollars a beer. Cheers. And he says, Tim, typically they brew a lot of different styles. They can do a kettle sour in 12 to 20 hours. Breweries have equipment that's more efficient than us home brewers. Right. Uh, Tim says, what is your favorite food? And then Eric, without wasting time, says, meatloaf. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> Bring me the meatloaf. Mom! Mom! <laughs> Fuck! The he's meatloaf. Gonna the, he's going to have the meatloaf. <laughs> Billy I have all with, meatloaf, fellas. I do. Yeah, Billy responds <laughs> with steak, steamed crabs, fried chicken. And then Eric says, goes even deeper and says, he'll eat this shit cold, too. <laughs> you ever meatloaf sandwiches? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simmer Eric. down now. Simmer <laughs> down. Shout out to Eric's mom. She apparently makes this, amazing this meatloaf. Family's a little hungry now. Eric's mom making meatloaf this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, uh, guys. Thanks. Billy says, "Fact is, the ATF is not allowing real pot hemp in any beer. They will charge any brew a distribution of a controlled sub- substance." Did not know that. Hmm. 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 Uh, then he said, "For a while, though, out there." Yeah. It's just one of me. I mean, like I said, O'Fallon's did it. That was a couple of years ago when they did theirs. Yeah. I mean, you can't get high off of it, so it's kind of like. Not yet, anyway. And not with that attitude, Ron. <laughs> you hammered. You'd be fucking like that other day, you'd be hammered and high. That'd be great. Is that going to be a different sobriety test? <laughs> <laughs> Billy says, I actually get a, a lot a lot of hits on local, not as many as macro, but I write for craft 
advocate firm that puts on beer festivals as well as a local radio station that do so quick beer reviews. So I have a lot of local subscribers. Yeah, so that gets to depend on your base and stuff too. They drive things, yeah. Tim says if you didn't buy your favorite food, it wouldn't be there. That's a good point. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who buy certain beers, and that's why they stay in distribution and why people buy them. Um, I'm just so happy to be not one of those people. Yeah, I rarely, well, probably less than 2% of the time, go out and buy the same things over and over again. I mean, if I've had, listen, it's like, I get a deal or something. I mean, it's hard to walk away. A deal um, never happens. Never, never seen one. It's like the Godfather. You made an offer I couldn't refuse. Sometimes. <laughs> Every single time he goes to the store, they do that. So, yeah. uh, Eric says, "Damn YouTube, uh, they're trying to block his comments." <laughs> That's on you, Eric. Eric, that I'm, is on you. I'm buddy. saying IPA number five, and they won't do it. Yeah, don't do comments with one letter per message. Like I mean, <laughs> I'll get to America and I'll read them. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know you're all happy that you're done and you're drinking whiskey and all kinds of beers and stuff, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> and Billy and says, fact, "The fact, unless you're monetized on YouTube, you will not place high in the search in YouTube." But yeah, title. I don't know about that. I don't know Ooh. about that. I'm not, I'm not monetized. I've got eleven thousand views on that one video. Yeah, no, I mean, it again, it depends. Like, I, I have Anchor Porter, and I'm like, if you search for Anchor Porter, I'm like top 10 in the search, and there's people that have like five, 6,000 views. I only have 100 and something, but I'm up there. And I don't know if it's because of how I did it or whatever, but, I mean, you know, it's interesting. I don't know. They, they just told you people would take advantage of it, but they don't. It's a secret, baby. Uh, he says, people want new beers at brewery and, and or beer festivals. I will say this. If you go to a beer festival, the worst beer festivals for me are you go to beer festivals and they have shit you can buy at your local bottle shop down the street. or your Correct. Local, correct, correct. If I go to a beer festival, I don't want your – like if I see New Belgium, I don't want to be like, here's our uh, Ranger IP. <laughs> no, I can go buy it right now. Like where's your specialty or at least your seasonal something new or something that I can't get? Yeah. Those are the worst fests to go to, though. They and I've I've been to a couple of them. It's just like, dude, I it's tough to find something that you can't get locally or that you. you it's just it's it's stupid. Well, it's like when when Todd came up, right? And Todd can attest to this. We have almost like four to five hundred beers there. So mm -hmm. it's like you weren't looking for beers you can get at, back at home. You're looking for beers you couldn't get. Yep, yeah. that's what you're looking for. Yeah, you're looking for something that you is not readily available to you. I mean, there's a reason there's a VIP area because people want to go yep. to the VIPs. Yep. Oh, baby, VIP there, baby. Yeah. <sighs> We're all caught up well, on Speaking college. of the festival, when uh, when's the one in the uh, summer or end of summer? I think that one. Take a look here. I think it's the Saturday, Friday and Saturday after Labor Day. So that would be then? the 7th and 8th, I believe. But I haven't seen them post anything out there yet. I mean, they posted it out there, but they haven't posted anything for people joining or anything like that. Although that should come up here probably next month or so. Well, pencil me in. I'll probably come down for that one too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this one is a little little bit smaller. I think it's only like 200 breweries or 200 beers that we have, but it'll be on a square. It's usually pretty cool and nice and everything. Yeah. Um, I think Joe disappeared for a second here. Um, as we get in more with the American craft, favorite American craft brewers, any that you have out there that stand out to you for some of the American craft breweries that you kind of as your top tier? I know we covered breweries over the last few weeks, but. As a brewery in general? Yeah, like some of your favorite more craft brewers, like you always go to. Whew, the heck is kicking up. That you go to and that, um, you know, they're probably like your solid top tier ones. Like if you walk, like if you go in there, like. When Joe comes, they'll probably say, oh, Trillium or something like that, or Treehouse. You know, that's kind of like a top tier they would have there. Yeah. Um, you know, here, like, if I go to, like, say, uh, you know, Mad Tree is a pretty good brewery to go to, and they have pretty good yeah. beer. Yeah. Um, if I'm up there, like, with Left Hand, like in Michigan, that's like a top brewery, I think, that yeah. they good stuff. So just kind of top American breweries you kind of – that kind of always catch your eye and you usually like and you always yeah. enjoy well, for me, you know, keeping it in, in the local, in the state of Indiana, um, Three Floyds, obviously, yeah. is at the top of the list for me. 18th Street Brewery is right there, 1A, 1B. I mean, I know I've sent you guys some of those, and yeah. to me, they make fantastic stuff, and not a lot of people know about them. They're kind of a, a 
at this point, I don't know how much of you know people don't don't know of them. Probably probably know more of them than they did before. But yeah, for me, like Three Floyds, 18th Street Brewery. Uh, well, you got a uh, 450 North getting big too. Yeah, now. I was just gonna ask you how far is 450 North from you? 450 is about uh, 60 miles. But the weird thing with them is their distro stuff. Some of the stuff that I sent you guys, I like the rainbow stuff. Mm-hmm. It isn't really their best stuff. I mean, it's it's. I don't know what you guys. Did you think? Did you guys think that stuff was pretty solid? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It was good. I was thinking like I see more of the. Uh, what's the one they have now? Not the Nuggets series they've been doing, but the slushy or something. Yeah. Uh, so that's last week. Popular. The last Friday, about every third. Friday, well, I'll say every third Friday. Every three weeks, they come out with like a, a new release day. Last week they came out with five new beers last Friday. And yeah. it's brewery and it's brewery release only. It's not distro. And what I've had of those beers that come out are ten times better for the most part than the main yeah. distro stuff. So if you like the distro stuff, the stuff you can get on a Friday if you're lucky to get it, is pretty good. It is really good. And it's a lot of the nugget series and uh, the slushy slurpees series, whatever they call it. Yeah, I see like a list of them. Shots with them, like people are picking them up like crazy. So, but I, feel like, like, I also feel like there's a three year old running that company with the names of the beers. Like, well, like, my, <laughs> locally, is a lot of there's a lot they get a lot of flack. Like, either people really love them or people really hate them, and they get yeah. flagged a lot because of how they try to play the 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 names and the and the yeah. you know the can art or whatever. How they're trying to make it like a a video game or whatever, super, you know, nuggets or cereals or whatever, you know. But when it was candy cigarettes, everybody was okay with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the weird thing with is this one was just in southern Indiana, or is it up by like Angola, South Bend? Uh, so it's probably like 40 miles south of Indianapolis. Oh, all right. So they haven't made it to northern Indiana then. Well, I don't know how far they just dis- distro. I don't know the distribution. Where they just drill at. I have to make me a trip to Angola. <laughs> but the, the the funny thing about them was probably three years ago, I would have never thought they'd still be in business. Really? So kind of the story with them is like their family has a farm in Columbus. And from my understanding is like the dad opened up like a winery. And so he's got two, uh, he probably maybe has more than two sons, but two sons, I think, that run the brewery. They kind of just do whatever the hell they want. So oh, they're they're actually getting better now as they're going along. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, their beers trade like Trillium or Treehouse on the, on the trade market. So people that can't get them flip out for them. So gotcha. But also, like I said, in the same sense, their re- uh, brewery release only stuff is, I think, a lot better than their mm-hmm. uh, you know district stuff, which is kind of typical, I guess you can see today for the most part. But to answer Rod's question for me, you know, locally, uh, well, not locally, three points, it's probably actually closer to you, Eric. But <laughs> yeah. it's, it's that's isn't that right on the the border of Indiana and Illinois? 18th oh, Street Brewery is like, yeah, is, is in Gary, I think. So that's yeah. like Chicago area. Yeah. And then uh, the three points yeah. is like 30 miles from there, I think, Munster in Munster, Indiana. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's probably a lot closer for you. I don't know how close are you to the border. Uh, from where I'm at, if I drive time is probably two hours to the border. Okay. So yeah, so you're probably two and a half, maybe three to three Floyds, maybe. Which yeah, I think Chicago, is probably three and a half to four for me. From Chicago was three and a half to almost four. Okay. From where I'm at, that would almost be a uh, central in between place there, because Chicago is probably four and a half for me. Four to five, four to five, let's say, depending on traffic and you know, stops and all that. But, gotcha. But yeah, for the brewery release stuff of, of four fifty, I'd put them up there. Uh, Tax man for me is another one. Which, Rod, I need to get some more stuff for you because I know you're the big Belgium uh, guy. That you, they make some fantastic stuff for Belgium yeah. stuff. And I think I sent you guys. I don't know if I sent all of you all any of the tax man stuff. I know I did send Rod. <laughs> Joe's just nodding his, his head. I will get you some tax. I will get you some tax, man, Joe. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Belgian beers. <clears throat> <laughs> no, I, I like I like uh like what basically Rod said. He likes all the Belgians. I'm I'm more of like the darker, like the strong darks and the and the quads. 
uh, triples and like Belgian pal and stuff. I just, uh, they're not for me. Yeah. Well, I would say, yeah, I'm more to the quads and stuff like that, too. I mean, the Belgian pale is okay, but they're not the, the favorite of mine either. But I mean, I'll drink them. I like a Belgian wheat ale. Like a whip beer? Yeah. Yeah. But not really good. I like the I like the the, the kind of the, the consistency of the wheat with the kind of the spice of the Belgian. With the coriander and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys have, like, for your, like, any top breweries? I mean, like, Eric, you're out there with Bells and stuff, too. Yeah, I got Bells, Founders, Arcadia, Boatyard. Old Nation, um, the one in Ann Arbor, which is, I can't, the Arbor name is Kate. Pardon? Arbor Brewing? Yeah, Arbor. And then I've got <laughs> found, the found, <laughs> yeah, which I haven't been there yet. I haven't been there yet. We're making our way there. We're making our way. <laughs> and I got, uh, what's another one? Um, Perrin, which I've sent you guys some of their beers. No um, love and for shorts. Old Nation. No love for shorts. Uh, uh, no shorts. love for shorts. Sorry. No Ooh. love for shorts. Oh. Shorts dark. is actually for me. It's quite a quite a ways. It's like like in the upper part of Michigan. But Dark Horse. Oh, I got Dark Horse. Yeah. I got Atwater, which is over in Detroit, Atwater's which good. is a good yeah. hour and a half, two hours for me. So I got hey, quite a lot of breweries around here. Or something. Let me know because I know their national manager, and he's the one that brought me a case of beer before. I could probably set you up out there if you want to do a video shoot. I got Wolverines <laughs> over there too. Yeah, Wolverine there. Brewing. <laughs> not his Unbelievable. <laughs> He's basically hey, trying to pass out Rod J. Deals there. Said, it was the only reason. Well, I'll bring you a few beers when I'm back in Cincinnati. He pulls up in front of my office. He's like, takes four six packs. There you go. I'm like, I was going to take a couple of beers. You gave me a freaking case. Rod J. Deals. <laughs> for free. Deals. It's not fun to ever try to walk a case of beer through an office, though, too, especially when people know the sound of beer clinging. Yeah. Well, well I also got New Holland. I'm sorry, New Holland. I can't, can't leave those guys out. Uh, well, yeah. What was the what was the question? Because I, I I went to just some of your favorite American craft breweries that you oh, would in your top, like your top tier kind of. I know you would have probably say Treehouse up there. No, nah, I don't no, fuck Treehouse. Um, I like Treehouse. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I can't, I can't. Like, I mean, look, the cans are behind me, and like other half, other half would be up there. Other half, yeah. but if you want for stuff like I can actually get in distribution and I don't like don't have to trade for or have someone pick up or anything, um, like Lagunitas and Founders, and uh, yeah, I know they're not a craft paper there. Um, Firestone Walker, I really love the barrel age stuff, like Parabola over here. Um, I missed out on that one this yeah, year. That, I was wrong, wrong way. Hang on, I don't know what's right. I don't. I, yeah, yeah. Those are probably the top tier stuff I can get. Um, single cut beer smiths out of New York. They do a lot of good stuff. They're expensive, but I like them. Yeah. Uh, I used to love Stone. Like they used to come out with a lot of great stuff, and now they're very hit or miss. But I used to love Stone back in the day. Yeah. I don't know what happened? I know you're all pumped for the Mocha IPA, but I like the was, Mocha because they, well, you know what it is. There's nothing there's really that I've found that really competes against the Mocha. It's just a yeah. nice feel. No, it is, and and it's and it's one of the, I, I feel like one of their few hits over the last couple of years, like something yeah. they introduced that was new that was actually really good. Um, yeah, I I mean, you know, you guys mentioned like Dark Horse and New Holland. I love the uh, the Dragon's Milk series. They always mm -hmm. do a good job locally here in Western New York. Uh, pretty much Big Ditch Broom Company and Thin Man are doing really good stuff. Um, Outside of that, there are some other ones that are like do a beer that I enjoy or a series, but uh, not not a lot of local stuff that's just like mind blowing. I have to get everything that they release, so uh, I, I still have a tendency to stick to some of the bigger brands. Now, a lot of my reviews would say otherwise. I would actually say some of my favorite beers are from Ontario, Canada: Bellwoods Brewery, Nickel Brook, Barn Cat. A lot of stuff you guys have never heard of, and that I I, you know, I have some reviews from them on my channel and whatnot. But yeah. a lot of people don't know about them because. They're Americans, and you don't know. Yeah, you just don't. Americans. <laughs> yeah, outside of just like knowing the bigger craft breweries, like if people know Moosehead, it's like a win in America. Like, oh my God, yeah, I know Moosehead. A lot of people be like, "What the fuck's Moosehead?" But uh, what people don't know Moosehead. You think? No, nah, there's a lot of people don't. Great, well, no. Yeah, no, they should be, but a lot of people don't. But like going up to like next week, so we'll plug Chad the Albino Rhino Beer Fest next next. Saturday, May twenty fifth. We'll show. We're not plugging chat. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we're we're, plan we're plugging his festival, but not his channel. <laughs> but if you're in the Ontario area, or you're in the Western New York area, or within a couple hours, whatever, it's an awesome festival. It really is. All the money goes to uh, 
the Ronald McDonald House in Hamilton, Ontario, like all the profits. He doesn't make any money off of it, which is crazy. But uh, it's fun going there because and then I get a chance to try all the breweries from Ontario. Right. Which a lot of them don't make it down to southern Ontario where I can hop the board and get stuff. So it's interesting. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot. There's so much beer like to do like a top. Here's our top list. <laughs> it's tough nowadays, man. There's a lot of great beer. Yeah, so, well, I was just saying, like some of your top tier ones, not to have to rank them all out or anything. Yeah, yeah, no, that's. I I wish. Uh, I don't know. I just. I wish there wasn't as many, but I'm also at the same time really happy. There's a lot of beer, but I yeah. feel like I pass up so many great breweries now just because I focus on other stuff at times. So, what do you tell the border agent when you're at there and you say, "I'm just going to get some beer." <laughs> Uh, did never mention beer. <laughs> we're going to the casino in downtown Niagara Falls, and we're going to spend the night. We're going to go to dinner and stuff, and we got a couple six packs we're bringing, not to share with anybody. We're just going to drink them all, and then we're totally not going to beer fest the next day, but we are. And then uh, when we come home, where have you guys been? Oh, uh, not drinking beer. Clearly, <laughs> no. I don't. I don't lie, but at the same time, I don't like to give up too much because. As soon as you mentioned like alcohol, if you you come back on a Saturday, like I'll come back back Saturday night from his festival, and it's like if you see, oh, we're right, I was just at a beer fest for the last seven hours, I'd be like, all right, what, what? Yeah, no, that's where we were. Um, but yeah, the, the border stuff they usually don't give you much shit going in and coming back for Americans. The Canadians are the ones that get dinged a lot for duty, and and they get questioned a lot more than we do. So it's not usually a huge issue, but. Kind of like us going into Mexico. Oh yeah, go ahead in. When you come yeah. back, oh, let's stop right here. Let's yeah. check you. Out. If you're if you come back, <laughs> if you're allowed to come back, if you're still yeah. alive. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I've told the story before. I don't know if I've talked or told it on Rod's uh, channel, but uh, the first year of the Albano Rano Beer Festival, Paul from PA Brew News, he came up and he drove up his Jaguar car, an older one, so it wasn't anything crazy. But he, he drove it up and it died. It died. Mm -hmm. It died in the, uh, the the driveway of, of Chad's. And what ended up happening is he left his car there. Well, he hitched a ride with me and my pops back, and we actually drove him halfway to meet his mother of all people who said she would come pick him up at like 2 in the morning on uh, Easter morning. It was insane. Wow. Yeah, when well. we got to the border, I'm like, we have like three cases of beers in the trunk. How do you know us? You live in PA. We live in New York, and we're not close by. Your car is just hanging out in Canada. If we get to this border, we're going to get shit. Like the border is going to just – like we're going to probably get questions and stuff. Got to the border. Sure enough, the border guard, huge craft beer fan. Just came back from a beer fest in Nevada a week before we <laughs> showed up. Talked for us about five months about craft beer. Gave us all our passports back. I was like, yeah, fuck off. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just looking back at Paul. I'm like, dude, someone's looking down on you today because this is about to be a shit show. Because none of our stories would have worked out. We had like three and a half cases of beer. Your car's still stuck in fucking Canada. We don't know each other other than fucking YouTube. And we're cool because the guard wanted or enjoyed craft beer. So I'm like, you're, you're lucky. So it was enjoyable. Thanks. The beer gods. Yeah, the beer gods looking down upon us. Because <laughs> I'm like, dude, you look like you, you like just kill people in the backwoods. That's what you look like, Paul. I'm sorry, but that's what you look like. You're a big sasquatch. That's what you want. <laughs> Okay, like this is not gonna work well. You look like you came from the mountains. We don't. It's gonna be problematic, but it wasn't. So, are you sure they didn't say, "Look, it's Bob Ross Jr." <laughs> yeah. He painted him a picture real quick, and that was that was that's how he got got going. No, it was pretty crazy though. All right, Paul, your your videos of painting are fantastic. They are way better, way better than his beer reviews. Except <laughs> I love his beer reviews. This just painting is so much better. Just <laughs> it's great. He's he's now called Bob Ross. He's like a, he was wearing his black cowboy uh, hat in one one uh, review. He looked like a combination of Jim Ross, the wrestling announcer, and Bob Ross, <laughs> the painter. I was like, you are now Paul Ross. Just you gotta wear that hat in a, in an actual painting. I, don't I know tell you, he, his videos are relaxing now. Paul Ross. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, Paul. I'm just gonna paint a happy little turnbuckle here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I was like, there's no happy trees. They're all very angry, Paul. Like they got they look like there's blood coming out of them. It looks like death. Yeah. Uh, those are pretty good breweries stuff, so yeah. 
Yeah, if, then, if, I, uh, if I wanted to ex, if I wanted to expand on mine a little bit for more like national distribution, I would definitely put like Founders. Uh, well, I wouldn't say national as far as Mad Tree, but I can get that local here too. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Too bad uh, Joe and Eric can't get those. But can't I'll get have to Tree. Motherfuckers. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't go ahead there. I don't have anything. I said I'm going to have to kind of revisit Stone because I haven't had a Stone beer in God. I can't even remember the last time I even did one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying they're bad or anything, though. It's just no. Stone, Stone kind of has missed the mark for me the last couple of years. Outside of, like, the Mocha IPA, and there was another beer I enjoyed. Most of their releases just fall flat. And uh, well, they make so much shit. Series? Yeah, the Enjoy By series isn't even as good as it used to be. Then again, it could be my palate and just whatever, but, like, I don't really see the need to seek it out anymore. Well, I think, I think that could be a good example of just – Overstretching a little too far and, and feeding out more yeah. quality stuff is whether you know. I mean, their their line is so huge. I, f- I feel like them losing their head brewer, uh, Mitch Steele, a couple years ago may have coincided with my. Well, yeah, that, 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 that could not, be, yeah. But I mean, it could just also be placebo effect, and I'm just like, oh, he left. That means all their stuff is shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's it's not shit. It's just like Stone is one of those breweries that. You know, we're talking earlier with Tim and about like so many new beers. They seemingly come out with a new beer like every month for a long time. It'd be like, here's our this release and this specialty. And more often than not, those releases would be very enjoyable or or at the very least unique, innovative, creative. And now all of those that come out that I try, I'm just like, yo, it's okay. I think a a good example of that one, I don't know if you guys get the Woot Stout from them. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, mm, it used to be oh, like a highly sought after beer, but oh. I still see it on the shelves here now. Like it's nothing. I like used to have to get it on the day it was released. The Whoop Stout. I don't think I've seen that. The one they did with uh, Wesley Crusher. What's his name? Fucking dude from Stand by Me. Oh, uh, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 helped collab with them. It's like a pure stout with like a quarter of it aged in burn barrels and then they added like fresh nuts i forgot what it was if it was pecans or well, i think it's i think it's wheaton and uh gray Koch and somebody else's drew, name drew the or somebody drew curtis yeah. I, think it was. I don't know who that is I yeah know. i mean i usually like bill was saying i usually tend to walk past stone yeah unless i see the mocha i mean it just doesn't grab me anymore no i like eric and bastard I mean, other but I mean, other, I yeah. guess my point was that beer is great, but this year is like I still see it on the shelves. And yeah. before, when it first came out, if you didn't get it on the day it was released, you wasn't probably going to get it unless you traded. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the like one downfall. Series. Yeah, their enjoy pie series is good. I mean, listen, like I said, I, it doesn't hit me the same anywhere. They used to do like an unfiltered one. They did like a tangerine. They did a bunch of different ones. Yeah, tangerine express. I didn't even try that one. No, I think with the problem with stone, but it's not even stone. It's just a problem with it's with us. There's so many more intriguing beers to to grab and that catch your attention before a stone product now where stone was kind of at the forefront and the leader of that now it's like well yeah you're doing something cool but so are all these other breweries so yeah. no longer do i feel like it's my duty to to try all of your new releases now it's like i the quality of so and so brewery over here like it could be mad tree for you guys here's the new release i like mad tree they're consistent they're one of my favorite i'm going to grab that over stone I think every single place that Stone releases, everybody has that go-to brewery or multiple breweries locally. They're going to pick stuff up before Stone. So now more of the Stone stuff sits on the shelves and isn't isn't something that people seek out. Well, for I mean, me, I think for me, I think Stone is almost oversaturated themselves within their own organization. Yeah, because they have so much line, you know, so many beers in their lineups. Like, yeah, like you said, yeah, this is a new mocha milkshake, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, maple, <laughs> whatever stout. I'm gonna go get this one. Unicorn dust. <laughs> yeah, just all kinds of crazy stuff. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, no, it is. It's the way how it is. It's how it is. Man. I mean, for me, notwithstanding the mocha IPA, yeah, we need you. Stone has almost become like road for me. I kind of just walked past it. Oh, well, well, let's, let's I don't start. really look in that direction that much. I mean, we're gonna we need to sell now. <laughs> it's it's not not Rod I think is, you still look forward to that beer, though, beer. right? I, like, I hate any of their beers. Oh, I know. On those lines, it's just the look of it, the whole thing. Nothing really grabs my eye from that. Yeah. But oh, you still look for the mocha. You still want the mocha IPA, though, right? Yeah, the mocha IPA is like the only thing I actually, when it comes out, I'll buy it. Mocha IPA is 
like IPA the, number, we can't discuss it. Is that what it's like for you? I've right. never had the IPA number. No, I'm saying, but like for you, that's like it should it comes out, you gotta buy it. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like I think it's like 17, a six pack. I don't even think twice about it. I said, Oh, it's out. Go to the cart. <laughs> oh, it's out, it's mine. So do you think so do you think so that kind of raises a question? Do you in your all's opinion, do you think breweries would be better off um, doing like yearly specialty beers that only comes out at one month of the year, whatever, you know, like an Oberon. Well, I know Oberon comes out more than it did, but you know, I or whatever. Even even Oberon saturated up at least up here. I don't know about anywhere else. Yeah. No, well, I mean it, it comes out more than just the once a year. I think it's twice a year distribution now, I think. I, I will say this, Todd, in, in response to this, this is the way that at least I feel. You have to remember that us drinking, right, us four, and certainly a lot of guys in the comments, um, we are in. We are the minority of the craft beer drinkers. The majority of craft beer drinkers buy cases of beer. They buy six packs. They buy 12 packs. They have go-tos that they have in the fridge all the time. So – I think it's for us, we we come from a different angle where, yeah, to us, it'd be great to have nothing which just rotates all the time and we can try different stuff and whatever. You, I think you need those year-round offerings, those regular offerings, because we might make up, just to make up a number, like 5 or 10% of the craft beer drinkers that want something new all the time where there's 90 or percent or 80 percent that want those beers all the time. They want to be able to go to the store and go, I love Stone IPA. And I want to be able to buy a 12-pack every couple of weeks because that's what I drink. I think we're in the minority. And the way we look at it is a bit different than I think actually how the market is. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, that's a good point. I think all the breweries have to have their staples yeah. you know, that everybody wants to buy. Yeah, I, mean, and you're right. I mean, we're probably all the minority of people that want to go out and get something brand new every single time that hits the shelf or whatever. Yeah, we're not in the red beard minority, but we're close. We're close. Yeah, yeah we're not yeah. to that level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I like I like the the mocha IPA is kind of seasonal. I wouldn't want it all year round; it would just burn me out mm -hmm. on it. So I like kind of looking forward to knowing when it's coming out and being able to enjoy it. And then uh, when it goes, it goes. But yeah, well, I, think I guess I, I guess kind of what I was meaning there was would Stone be more beneficial to like cut back their um, bazillion beer lineup and just have their like mocha IPAs and stuff that only comes out, you know, every so often, once a year or whatever. Maybe. I think it depends on their their target and what they're trying to do and what their fan base is really following. I think like something like a mocha IPA is really a specialty type beer. I mean you gotta be both like a stout lover and an IPA lover, I think, to really enjoy that one. And some people don't like stouts, but they like IPA. So I think you go with more of the middle in between like you know you make an ipa you make a blonde you make all these other stuff out there that people can kind of go like joe was saying i'll buy a six pack or a 12 pack you're not going to get anybody really to buy a case of the mocha ipa because it's going to be no. too, too too expensive too yeah, yeah. it's gonna be like 70 dollars a case and then when they can buy <laughs> <laughs> unless you're Roger. yeah, yeah. Then, then it's like 70 cents <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, I think with these businesses, they're going to follow their numbers. They're saying, hey, all these people are buying this one over here. Well, we'll just make more over there. See how far we can run that out to or how much people actually drink that. And they say, oh, still an IPA. People like this all year round. Okay, that'll be one of our flagships, you know, and they've done that over the years and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, they put the enjoy buy out there and they change the dates on it, but are they changing the formula? Does anybody really know? No, I think they're keeping it pretty it's similar. Just, just because of metal thing, right? Yeah. Well, well the, the date was you need to enjoy it by, I mean, and, and I'll Ooh, give it a great play on their part, too. Yeah, Stone, and that, you know, happened whatever, like four years ago when they first came out with that, or even maybe five, four, four, four and a half. Yeah. Uh, but that, they were one of the first places that was like, look, you should drink IPAs fresh. And we're going to put the date on the bottle. It's 35 days out. That means five weeks. We're giving you five weeks before, you know, it just, it explodes. It really does. It, I mean, you can drink it the day after nothing's going to happen. But at the same time, it, it allowed people to know how fresh their beer was. If they, if it said like last month was 420, right. yeah, whatever, um, <laughs> you knew that. You know, whenever you bought it, you kind of knew if it was two weeks old or five weeks old, you didn't have to search for the date. And it was a good marketing point. And the good thing is they tie it to things, right? So they'll mm -hmm. come out again, I think, with Enjoy by 7 4. I think they usually do Joy yep. 4. So and they then, tie it to certain holidays and stuff when you're going to probably drink it and enjoy it by. And then they came with Enjoy After, which. That's what I was going to say. Did you all try those? No. Try no. that one? 
I don't like when they tell me to drink it after a certain day. I got to sit on this for a year. I did. I bought one and put it in my cellar and I had it for a year. That's why you buy two. You have one now and you have one after. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'll read the last couple comments I have here. Um, Billy says, in his opinion, with a beer festival, a bestseller of new beers, basically saying bring one of your bestsellers and bring a couple new beers. I agree. I mean, it's for me, if every single brewery had one of their staples, but they had like a couple new beers, then that's fine with me. I get frustrated when I see a brewery bring in like their three staple beers and that's it. It's like, what are you doing? What are you yeah. Doing? Uh, Eric Gilbert says the haze is alive with this Omnipolo Zodiac. Hopefully Zodiac doesn't try to kill me with the haze. The Zodiac killer. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Tim says, that's right. Why I'm going to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then later I says, yeah, my beer frizz is my beer room outside. Yeah. Um, Billy then says, we have a few festivals Saturday, this Saturday, June 1st, July 2nd, August 3rd, September 4th, October 4th. There's a lot of festivals, one a month. That's crazy. It's a lot. Uh, he says, yeah, okay, he's going, that's right, I'm going, a beer fridge. I think, okay, that's what he's saying. Uh, Tim was saying beer fridge. He has beer fridge in his beer room outside. Gotcha. Um, Billy then says top breweries here, Dogfish Head and Evolution Craft Brewing, Revolution Craft Brewing, Tall Tales Brewing, Burley Oak, Crooked Hammock, Backshore, Fin City, Heavy Seas. He did not answer the Heavy Seas comment, though, about the New England style. Surprised. Yeah, I forgot the name of it, but they got the new hazy one out there. Mm -hmm. He also says Flying Dog Dewey Beer Company. Uh, he says to homebrew, he just uses a stove, a propane cooker to brew, stainless steel pot, then bucket fermentation, also for dry hopping, then regular fridge. Uh, I wonder if they opened that new uh, Guinness brewery down there where Billy's at yet. They were Model. working on it. Because yeah. that's kind of where we're going to be pushing the American versions of the beers. Nice. T yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he's still here. Answer Billy. Um, Tim says he get he's got Wi-Fi out there, so you'll be seeing it. I think he's talking about his brew setup. Nice. Um, Billy says he'll be looking forward to the brewing. He says he also brews two or five-gallon batches when he brews. And he says, after Ron, time to say, hey, thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers, Billy. Cheers, Billy. Cheers, and then Billy. Tim cheers. says, uh, cheers as well. Then Eric Gilbert says, Brock Brewing, Five Petals, Town, Man Antler, Little Beast, Sir Monty's, Chronicle, Second Wedge, Old Flame, Forgetting Some. I think that's favorite breweries in Ontario. I've had stuff from Five Paddles. I've had stuff from Brock. And that's it, actually. I wonder if Eric go back to Ontario or something. It's a nice, nice little uh, problem. It is nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Malt Mustang, to round out the comments, says three favorite breweries Schlitz, Colt 45, and Mickey's. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I like me some Mickey's. You talk about Lurker, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll drink Mickey's. We still, we still get Mickey's here. Yeah, Mickey's is Are you going to do one on your channel, Joe? Uh, we're going to need you to settle down, Eric. <laughs> like, like I like it, but they just they just sell it down. I'll do a forty label out. It'll be a, it'll be a fun time. And then uh, Tim says, "Good one," in all caps, and that's it. We're done for comments. <laughs> so, any thoughts on the American craft beer market moving forward? Any kind of predictions or anything out there? Anything you're thinking? Save the tatas, pink IPA for American breast cancer. <laughs> With glitter. With gl oh, glitter. Beer. glitter oh, beer. yeah, with a little flakes in it. <laughs> um, what, are you, what are you guys thought of the glitter beer? I've never seen it. I haven't either. I haven't, yeah. yeah. You know, it does. I don't. My poop the next morning will look fantastic, but I, aside from that, I have no idea. <laughs> I think we might I think we might see more of a uh, growth in the sours area. I'm seeing more breweries kind of thinking that way. Sours, sours might be the, another thing that gets pushed kind of like the IPA well, did well, for a lot of stuff. You've seen a lot of kettle sours and a lot of dry hop sours kind of like yeah. bridging the gap between IPAs and sours. And I say maybe more. the Goza Berliner Weissen type beers maybe. Oh, maybe a little yeah. the kettle sours maybe from Golden yeah. Berliner Weissen baby. Yeah, I think you definitely see more. I mean, I thought last year the sequence you know, was a big hit for Dogfish Head. Yeah. What they should, what they did with theirs, and I think you you're going to see more people kind of. Not only concerned, like there's some that are out there that are like just too tart, 
Um, mm -hmm. And some of that are done really well. So it's kind of like it's an experiment. Like I would rather, like we have Urban Artifact here. They specialize in it. So you know when you get a beer there, it's usually pretty solid. Um, and I've had some of the one, like the one from um, Ryan Guys just came out with a new one. I haven't tried it yet, but they had one before. They really didn't do anything because they're more of an IPA brewery than they are sour. So it's kind of like, okay, yeah. you guys are messing around with it, but why would I want to risk it here when I can go across town here and get something I know is solid all the way around? The to jump on that, I think sour IPAs are like the next big thing. Um, yeah. There's a couple of breweries. There's Hudson Valley Brewery. Uh, they are in a, in New York. Like people, pe uh, th that's like the place where people line up now. Uh, apparently, they're making. I I've had a couple of their IPAs, but I have not had any of their sour IPAs. And they're pretty good, but like people are going nuts over them. And I feel like it's the next logical step. People love IPAs. People love sours. Combine them, make them somehow balanced and drinkable, and I think you'll suck a lot of people in. Yeah, definitely possible. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we just and most of them are kettle soured, so you don't have to worry about infections with the yeast and stuff because you're kettle souring it with bacteria. You don't have to worry about. I mean, there's a you know a lot of nightmare stories uh, like the brewery, for example, the brewery in California. I mean, mm -hmm. they they do a lot of their big beards and stuff, and they had all kinds of different infections. They came out with like their white chocolate uh, beer that a couple years in a row was infected, and fucking people are paying thirty dollars a bottle for it. And they would tell you like, keep it in the fridge, and if you don't drink within two months, it's going to be ruined. And it's like I paid thirty dollars for this beer. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we had an incident with the infections, blah blah. It's like, okay, that that's what the wild yeast can do if you don't get it under control. Where with the kettle sour, you have to not worry about any of that stuff. It doesn't have the same impact that like an actual sourness from a yeast will have, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about your whole operations <laughs> going under or having. Right. Some yeah, that, that could. Yeah, that. we have to clean all your equipment and make sure it's the infections. I mean, because the worst thing about beer is getting infected unless you're. Yeah. Unless you're drinking a wild ale, which is supposed to be infected, but if you're a brewery that doesn't have like a certain space or a certain ex like specific brewery to brew that stuff in, it'll get in everything else potentially, and then all your beers that are not meant to be infected with tartness and sourness, all of a sudden you're effed. So yeah. you'll see a lot more places. You do see a lot of places kettle souring. It's and I think Billy said in the comments like it like, takes like twelve to. 20 hours to brew the kettle sour or whatever and in a couple weeks they have it out the door so you see so many of these places doing it and it again it hasn't it doesn't have the depth of flavor that like a, a american wild ale would have but at right. the same time it has the tartness and sourness that so many people uh, crave and it's you have to worry about it, i think so i think you'll see more of those for sure yeah it'll be interesting to see I mean, we get into the now we get into the summer months so Mm -hmm. Garage of different stuff for the kind of refreshing quality type beers before fall comes back. Of course, yeah, we're in May, about to go into June, so pumpkin will be out in a few weeks. Yeah, pumpkin <laughs> beers. I cannot <laughs> wait to drink my first pumpkin beer when it's like 96 the pumpkin. degrees. Out. <laughs> yeah. pumpkin. Early July, it's going to be like, uh, it's 96 <laughs> out with 80% humidity. What do you want to drink? Pumpkin. Yeah. No, no, I want an eight percent pumpkin ale in the middle of the summer. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, that pumpkin from Southern Tier, oh my god, that was so good. <laughs> it is, it is just usually in the fall. Well, the last two years I've seen a lot of pumpkin beer hanging on shelves. And I mean, I wonder if they're gonna kind of catch that trend and maybe try to pull back on some of their production of it, or they're gonna try to force it out there. I just Nobody's think it's drinking it all. I don't know who, but somebody is. Well, they put it on. They put it on deals, and people end up picking it up. <laughs> They're like it has seven percent alcohol. Who cares if it tastes like a, a, a pumpkin pie? I'll drink it. <laughs> There's a bunch of high school kids with fake IDs grabbing it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eric Gilbert says he recommends Little Beast, a Man Antler, and Second Wedge, all Durham region breweries east of Toronto. Cool. I've heard good things about Man Antler, but I have never heard of the other two, honestly. But yeah. I don't know. American craft beer. It's going right down the drain. Done. <laughs> Three years from now, we're all going to be drinking Coors Light or Miller Light. <laughs> going back to it. <laughs> we're going to be looking for something without flavor. Too no. much flavor. Sometimes, though, that, I mean, that's what macros for. Like, sometimes I don't want to drink a beer and have to, like, contemplate what I'm drinking and, like, you know, the complexity of the beer and, like, think about somebody just want to drink a beer. Yeah. To just drink it. That's where macros are. I would think towards the end of the year, too, as far as Prediction. I think we'll see more of the uh, mid-sized type breweries either taking over or merging with some of the smaller breweries too, to kind of consolidate some things. And 
Oh, you think it's too saturated? Yeah, just, yeah, because there's some there are some breweries feeling the heat out there because of the competition. And you know, we saw it like last year. I think you could see more groups kind of like with um uh I think it was was a victory and um got together with the one at PA. Who was in PA by Paul? Victory's in PA. They got together with um oh New York. I can't so it's here. here. And then another brewery to form like a conglomerate together. I think you might have some of that to keep off. Some of the macro, but I think some of the ones that can afford to take over, they might step in and take over some of the other ones to kind of keep it still craft and not have the big macros come in. So, but I think you may you may have more experimented with some of the macros too. You have Paps, like we talked about earlier in the other review. You got the uh, Budweiser bourbon beer coming out here in September. You you know you might have Miller Mess. You might they might see some macros out there trying to kind of throw some stuff out there too so it'll be interesting going forward now i did like budweiser there what was it the not the freedom reserve that's out now it's the oh the red lager i like which that one, one. which one is now is now the freedom i thought the now was the red it's not now it's not the red the red was it's the a freedom reserve now okay. oh that's the budweiser one right you're saying yeah. yeah that's supposed to be like george washington's recipe or something that i i haven't had that yet but i like the red lagers but you guys yeah. know i'm a macro drinker too so yeah i mean i i told people i said i'll try the uh budweiser one when it comes out in september because i like bourbon so i'll give it a try what, i'll see what it tastes what like what one's that gonna be is uh they're doing a bourbon they're teaming up with jim beam oh okay do a bourbon beer so is it gonna be a stout uh no some type of ale i think they're doing <laughs> okay. i mean a stout would be a good play but i think it's just an ale they're doing there but can't be worse than platinum, right? So, oh man, it could. I, I like platinum. I yeah, like platinum. It could. Don't don't ask for it, Rod. It could. I mean, it's it's like like platinum. platinum wasn't horrible to a terrible. I mean, it's not a Zima, but yeah, it was lower than I think. It's not, yeah, it's not to the Zima level. <laughs> Which I just saw Zima's back out again. Yeah. So they, they came out like this year again yeah. more Zima, and it's like, why now, is it here? Are we talking Zima by itself or Zima yeah. with your ranchers? Because yeah, it's a whole different, different ball game, sons. No, it's still Zima. It's still Zima. Zima. It's just, <laughs> you get yourself a good whole, jelly the, rancher. The whole lipstick with a pig is still a pig type thing. <laughs> I, mean, I should probably try Zima. I, I haven't had it since it was back in the day, and I don't remember much about it other than <laughs> I could be doing some local no, we like Monday. It is funny when you bring up Zima that I was like Jolly Ranchers is using next word out of someone's mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, well, those where those Jolly Ranchers at, baby. We need some watermelon. Watermelon. <laughs> you know. Got a couple more comments uh just randomly popping up here. We got uh raining on his own parade says uh drinking a Samuel Adams New England style IPA, just grabbed it at the corner store for two thirty six a can. Killer. Oh, man. Oh, for I'm telling you, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, like I said, I can I can drink that. Through the summer at points. I mean, I got another four pack in the fridge, and that's going to be kind of like a hangout type beer, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for the price point and the enjoyability. Uh, Tyler Finkbeiner, I don't want to conf confuse him with Tyler Mansell. I mean, Mansell. Uh, Mankel. Um, he says, I think I heard somewhere that Michigan alone has like 300 or 500 breweries. That's a ton. Oh, Michigan's always had a shit ton of breweries. <laughs> like yeah. when I went to my first uh, Michigan Craft Beer Fest where I got this shirt from i think the beer fest i went to had like 90 85 90 breweries at that fast alone and that was like that's crazy i did, did half of my had no idea existed so i can't imagine how it is now um and then eric gilbert comes back and says flying monkeys imperial paranormal pumpkin ale is the only pumpkin beer i liked um i've had that before and uh it was pretty good uh there are better though did eric just pop another one he did Oh, <laughs> why are you not drinking Miller Lite? What happened, you traitor? Hey, I got some Coors in there given to me. So, uh, okay, free beer, Rajay. Yeah, free beer. Come beer. on, baby. We got, we got a, we got a question for Rajay though. Oh yeah, there we go, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I thought you were recording that, but he cracked the Coors. Uh, this is this is for Saturday, buddy. Nice. He's got to cleanse, uh, cleanse his palate. Yeah, <laughs> pickles. Use a pickle. <laughs> yeah, no, you use dill pickles specifically. <laughs> okay. Water, juice? water, pickle crackers. Pickle juice. Yeah, the you just drink, drink the dill pickle juice is best cleanser. <laughs> yeah, for that it is. Um, 
Rating Iron Parade says he's got a question for Rod. Okay. I don't want to read it. Be uh, like long uh, walks on the beach. <laughs> uh, that is the question. Rod, how do you respond? What's the question? <laughs> do you like long, watch, long walks on the beach? No. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, He's, is there, going, he's going is there for a the, bar uh, at the end of the walk? Maybe. If there's a bar at the end of the walk, then why the hell would I be on the beach? <laughs> right. He says, he says, doing his best Ewer impersonation of not trolling well, he says, um, I'm a school bus driver. My boss wants me to do a shift in two hours. Is it still time for me to get my beer on? It is not. <laughs> if it is, that's on you. <laughs> it was sad today because we had a. I don't know if you guys saw that bus crash that happened in New Jersey with the school bus. Oh, I heard about that. I didn't. Way, know. To, way to be a dick raining on your parade. Jesus. <laughs> that was pretty sad. I mean, the last I saw was like one of the teacher, one of the children that died, but it, on the highway hit a truck or something, too. Oh, so that's terrible. Uh, Which I still don't understand how we don't have seatbelts on buses, but. Yeah, I never understood that, right? Yeah. Thoughts out uh, for that family. Eric Gilbert says High Life is way better than, I guess, Miller Lite. High Life better than Miller Lite? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I can see that. It's a little sweeter. Yeah. I would say High Life is better than Miller Lite. It's but, I mean, the motherfucking champagne of beer, sons. Let's settle <laughs> down. We know it's the best. We know it's the best. They tell yeah, us it's the life. best. Drink right from the bottle. I mean, if you're at the champagne of beers, what are you? That's right. You're trash, apparently. You're either champagne and beers or you're the breast of the guys. Well, your beer. But again, Coors Banquet made with Rocky Mountain water. So I don't know. I don't know what's better. It can turn blue when it's cold enough. That's right, because you can't figure it out yourself by <laughs> <laughs> You need a visual. Like by the touch that it's I don't cold. I mean it feels it feels like it's ready to drink, but <laughs> I'm not sure. Get that darker blue. Oh, hang on. The mountains, they're blue. <laughs> Is the sky blue? I think, we can, <laughs> I think we can all agree. Coors Banquet, Miller High Life, Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Coors was good enough for Smokey and the Bandit. That's true. For that truck to Texarkana, the Florida. Uh, Rainier Air Parade said, I thought Rod said, there's always time to get my beer on. Did he lie to me? There's always time. Well, he only lied to you if you're a moron. So <laughs> the answer would be yes, right? Yeah, you're afraid he totally lied to you. <laughs> I love I love giving it to Rain Air Parade. What a, what a <laughs> Eric Eric Gilbert says the rest is trash. Damn, we said Miller High Life, the rest don't matter. That's what we said. <laughs> Miller High Life trash. And this is this is the man from Ontario. Not saying Molson Canadian, he's not saying Labatt Blue. He's saying Miller High Life. I actually don't mind Labatt Blue as much. I see you. Oh, no, that's yeah, that's true. Actually, makes it's actually pretty good when I cook it in chili, though, too. I can see that. And then uh, Eric Over says he uses a champagne glass, baby. Oh, baby, <laughs> that is the champagne of beer, baby. <laughs> Pour a little bit of orange juice in there, get your mimosa on, baby. Um, Earth says 93 garbage. Now settle down, it's not KBS. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I have to correct myself in the oh, actual video. He said 94. He said the 93 and then say it's garbage. That's he actually right. said 94 and then he didn't say it was garbage. He said, uh, This is wow, this is bad. How is KBS this bad? And then in, in the comments, it was like adjusted after review 93 out of 100. I'm like, Oh, yeah, it's, you know, that A minus into the A level, absolutely terrible, <laughs> gross. Every single 93 out of 100 beer I've ever had, I drain pour because who wants to drink anything less than like a 95? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's why yeah, I made sucks. that video about ratings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like if you – listen, if you can't properly tell people how you enjoy it and give a number that kind of backs up what you're saying, you can't You can't be like, oh, this is a, a perfect beer. I'm going to give it an 88. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that would be a hundred on your scale is what a perfect beer would be. You know, ten out of ten, a five out of five. Nobody gets five. the curve we're grading on right yeah, now. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no. This beer sucks. I give it a ninety-eight. 
it's absolutely <laughs> horrible, but we'll give it a 98. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. No, there's some, there's some, that's why ratings don't matter. You, you usually by the end of whatever review, if, if the reviewer is at least at the very least, just halfway decent, you get an idea of whether or not they'd like the beer. More often than yeah. not, I can kind of almost, for people who do rate, I can, when I'm watching the review, I, I almost know exactly what they're going to say almost every time. It's because they do a good job. You'd be like, okay, they're going to give it a four and a half out of five. Like, I know this. And they usually do, or within like a half, like a quarter point. So, but ratings don't yeah. matter. I mean, they're all subjective to a point. So, yeah. I mean, you can give an analysis of what you think about that beer, what you're tasting, but your rate is going to be based off what your rating is. So that's why I rate in my I rate in my reviews because I like rating and I that's my own personal rating. But I always tell anybody everybody at what I'm a I'm like, don't don't listen to me. It doesn't matter what I'm saying. No. You, you drink the beer yourself and figure it out. But like for me, this is what I give it. But I will but I will say like if you're watching like a beer person like we do the beer videos and stuff and you're actually agreeing with them a lot, you do develop a consistency if you like those style of beers mm -hmm. that you're saying, okay, well, Joe rated this beer, you know, four and a half out of five or whatever. Joe's usually your point. Chances are I may like that a little bit more. I probably yeah. got like a 95% probability I'm going to like it as well. Now, yep. if someone says this beer is terrible, it's automatically a B plus. It's like, wait a minute, you said it was terrible. How the hell is it a B plus type thing? And you're <laughs> got fluctuations in there. Yeah, that's an issue. I know how it's a B plus. It's usually an A minus though. <laughs> 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 the thing is, is yeah, no, it's you. You watch reviewers who, yeah, they might eighty or ninety percent of the time, you know, be very comparable to your palate. You, they might love the vast majority of the styles you do and so forth. So yeah, you're gonna put more stock into what they're saying because yeah. chances are you're gonna like what they're saying and you're gonna dislike what they're saying. But I've not, you, you can only take it for what it's worth because if you like eighty or ninety percent, that means one out of one out of every ten beers or two out of every ten beers. You're going to disagree with that person. So, yeah. you know, everybody's palate's different, and that's just how this world works. So, anybody who takes what what a beer reviewer says as gospel is doing it wrong. You take it as a resource, like anybody. Like you should take a beer review that pretty much the same you take from an Untapped beer advocate rate beer score. Seriously, if you go to Untapped more often than not, it's kind of right on the money. If I go to Untapped and I see a beer and it says four out of five. I'm usually around a 375 to a 425. Sometimes I'm yeah. higher, sometimes I'm way lower, but most of the time I'm in that general region. That's because that's the general consensus. Yeah. It's not like yeah. rape beer. Yeah. No, rape, rape beer is gross. It's <laughs> but it's funny thing is, it's like, like I, and the other thing is, like, when people review beers, I, the reviewers that I watch, I like when they like stuff and I like when they don't like stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I have trouble with the reviewer that likes just about everything he's had. Like, you don't like everything you have. You eat food, you don't like every piece of food you come across. It's like you cannot love every beer a certain way. And I like seeing when people are, they don't like a beer or they're, they're talking. It's like those people I like to watch a little bit more just because they're, I feel mm -hmm. like they're being more, not that the other people aren't being honest. Maybe they just have a fun beer they didn't like. But chances are you're probably just still putting it out there and just saying you're liking it, but you may not like it as much as you're kind of putting on camera. So, yeah. like, I watched uh, – one of the guys I watch now, I don't know if you guys have watched him or not, is this guy's thoughts. Who's yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. And he had one today. He rated a one, but he wasn't a big stout person. You know, going, but he was talking about his stuff. He didn't slam the beer, but he gave a reason why he didn't like it. It's like you can't like every beer to your palate. You're not going yeah. to find beers you don't like. And you have to take those reviews in context of what they are, too. It's very easy to say, well, that guy rated this a 4.5 out of 5, but you don't know the backstory of them. What right. styles they like, what styles they dislike, what brews they like, what brews they dislike, and so on and so forth. So, you know. It's 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 just like anything else. Um, we have beer by the numbers. Ryan show up here and he said hey, good night. Ryan. He said good night in German, and I'm not going to say it in German. I'm going to say good night because I know what that means. Um, <laughs> Eric Gilbert shows says uh, Canadian is horrible. He does not like Molson Canadian. Um, Jamie Basement Beer Reviews friend of ours says 88 out of 94, but Nick gave it a 3.75 out of five. So that's a running gag. Nick Maxwell Star Beer Reviews. I always give him shit because he gives everything a 3.75 out of five. Literally everything. And he still does. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Rainy I Prayed says, KBS still at the stores here in Portland, Maine. Yeah. And he says, price even went down at one store to $21.99 from $24.99. Yeah, that's not like that. $21.99 is like the price here at all. Uh, yeah. Period. So that's crazy. And then Eric Gilbert says, go-to macros are High Life, Old Vienna, and Moosehead Pale Ale. Usually a case or two in the basement. 
I had no idea Moose had made a pale ale. Oh, baby, they're doing it so okay. It's so okay. Baby. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> That's solid. solid. No big deal. I like Moosehead, though. I like Moosehead in general. It's so okay. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, baby, it's so okay. <laughs> Coming up on Moosehead Week on the Beer Patrol. Yeah, no. No boost at me. They do Rattlers. <laughs> they do Rattlers. So the aforementioned Nick, who gives everything a three, some five out of five, he just did their blueberry Rattler. So he three enjoyed it. Five. Yeah, they did a watermelon one. He gave it a four, that mother effer. Oh. But he wanted to give it a three, seven, five, but he knows I watched, so he's like, I'm going to give it a four. But yeah, he <laughs> uh, they did a watermelon Rattler too. I think it was last year. Uh, or maybe a year, a couple years ago. So boost had does some interesting stuff. They came out with a couple special releases too. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you back up to 10 viewers. Back down to nine. Back to nine. <laughs> Eric Gilbert <laughs> says, Pal Al is the classic. Baby, it's the classic. Pal Al, baby. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Moosehead here is, unfortunately, we don't get it super fresh, and it's in a green bottle, so unless you're buying, like, a 12-pack of it or a six-pack that's way behind everything, get that skunk out, baby. Or a six-year-old. Yeah. 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 I still think it's ridiculous that, that Eric <laughs> Eric went to the store to buy a Brooklyn product and came out with a six-year-old IPA off the shelf. <laughs> that is one of the grossest fucking things I've ever heard ever. Like, that's terrible. Yeah, that's absolutely disgusting. You got a beer from 2012 that <laughs> is an IPA. That's not even a good IPA to begin with. Like, unbelievable. Fucking Brooklyn, what pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like Garrett Oliver, but the rest of it, that's terrible. Yeah. That'd be a good video for Friday, my story on Brooklyn beer. Yeah, you should. And uh, Tyler shows up and says, I know I'm late to the party, Rod, but what do you think of that hamper? The hamper is solid. It's very good. I like it. But like I said, it's going to be a strong like or maybe a strong dislike, depending. It's funny. I, I mean, I rated a four out of five. And I think on Untapped, the average is around three seven five right now for the general. Nick. So yeah, Nick. The general was Nick Maxwell. Star, it was right? Nick out of five. That's what it was. <laughs> and I just think it's it's got a nice feel to it. If you like the aroma, can be pretty pungent. It tastes good. The body is a nice meeting the full body. So you got like a little bit of a bigger beer. It's only seven percent ABV. Um, you definitely have the flavor, long lasting duration on it. It's a nice little beer. I mean, it's it's solid. So that's the thing that like New Belgium, if people look at New Belgium and just look at New Belgium and say, oh, fat tire, blah, 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 I think New Belgium is just this or that. But New Belgium has a lot of good, more specialized beers that people don't ever try. I think they get I think they get missed on some of their stuff, like the Lips of Face series and some of the other things they're doing. They have some nice beers. Shut up, Siri. Hey, Siri, shut your mouth. <laughs> We're doing a live show for F sakes. No one has time in there, but um, I, I like it. I like it so far. So I'll do a review on this probably this weekend, and when I get the review uploaded, I hopefully it'll be this weekend. But I got to schedule a lot of stuff out and everything because a couple weeks I'll be in Mexico. So drinking all the Coronas. Yeah. <laughs> um, you order tacos in Mexico still? They're like, you want tacos? Yeah. <laughs> like, really tacos? Go get some street to America. Go get some street <laughs> fair and enjoy yourself. Um, check t- check out Tyler's channel if you guys haven't. Uh, Tyler Finkbeiner. That's the that's his name. F I N K B E I N E R. Review the brew, but his name is Tyler Finkbeiner. That's how you can find his channel. I think Tyler he, I, Tyler just went over a hundred. Well, yeah, channel. he did. Yeah, hundred. Congratulations, congratulations to him. Yeah, congratulations that night when he did it. Yeah. You know what else he did too? He hoarded all the fucking tart strawberry M forty three from Eric, so we couldn't try it. So. <laughs> what the hell, Tyler? We're trying to drink that too, man. <laughs> Tyler, that guy. How much you have left? I'll take it all. I'll, I'll take, take it, all. it all. I just wanted to try it. <laughs> I want Eric, it all. Eric lives like <laughs> six seconds from the brewery and he couldn't get it. I had, I yeah, had a I went there and they said, oh, we're, we, we distributed it all. I'm like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> I had a buddy do that one time here. And, uh, we went to one of the beer stores from work at our lunch break and um, – it was like a new place. They had zombie dust. They had two six packs. He's like, "You want any zombie dust?" I'm like, "No, good. I'm buying it all." <laughs> he's <just> like, <laughs> <laughs> he's he it all. More zombie dust. And he's like, "No, that's all. That's do we got?" So that's hilarious. Yeah. Wow. Um. <laughs> he's like, "You like zombie dust? You want it all?" Like, I want all the ZB, man. Let him go. Right. Let him go. Crazy. Uh, 
It's crazy with a kid. <laughs> I do wonder if uh, Sierra Nevada is going to come back with their beer camp across America 2018 this year. I'm trying to search and see if they are. Probably will be overpriced again. And yeah, I, I, buy it, I buy it every year and <laughs> you're always disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you got me again. You got me. Like, oh, you, you have Trillium? This is really a great non-Trillium beer. Good job, guys. Uh, <laughs> See, the where's the versus beer across America and like the next year's beer across the world or whatever. It's like the American, oh, I don't want a part of that one anymore. <laughs> but we'll about, go outside the country and get people to do it this time. How about beer camp across don't release the pack anymore, please? Because I don't want to pay <laughs> fucking $28 for 12 beers at all. I like some par. <laughs> no, I give them credit, but it's just logistic. What I hate about it is the logistics are very difficult because you're you're collabing with twelve different breweries. Then you do that, and the problem is half of the beers are like IPAs, and they show up and they're already like two months old. You're like, what? Yeah. What are you doing? Like, what? You can't do a style that doesn't need to be relatively fresh. You're good to go because the ones that are always the best within the pack. Are Always the non hop forward ones, kids. They're always not fresh. So, um, Tyler says, Thank you guys. And I only got one four pack and it was already accounted for when I got it. I only had one can myself. Y'all need to hit me up sooner. Uh, so, Tyler, I think we're going to put in an order right now for any M43 <laughs> variant or ME MI. I mean, yeah, yeah, anything. I uh, listen. Anything from Old Nation, but also any of the fruitsicles from odd sides, like where do we where do we put in orders? Do I send PayPal? No, he, he gets a lot of like, cool beer, and it's uh, it's 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 just the tart strawberry one sounds so good. Like that, hopefully they brew brew that again. Yeah, I hope they do too. Well, it seemed like it got pretty good feedback. So if they're smart, <laughs> they were. So yeah. apparently in Wisconsin, there's nothing to really do but get drunk. So. <laughs> Well, let's well, especially down. in Madison, All especially right. in Madison. USA Today, USA Today put out the top ten cities where Americans get the drunkest. Number one is Green Bay. Number two is El Claire. Number three is Appleton. Number four is Madison. Number five is Fargo, North Dakota. Number wow. six is Oshkosh, Neal, Wisconsin. Number seven is Missoula, Montana. Number eight is Grand Forks, North Dakota, Minnesota. Number nine is Wissau, Wisconsin. And number 10 is Lacrosse out of Alaska, Wisconsin. So seven of the top 10 cities in the country to get drunk are all Wisconsin. Isn't that where Tyler Mansell's from? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> all of those places? Well, I mean, I, I get like the North Dakota, and even if they said South Dakota, they think yeah. like Montana or whatever. But, I mean, I guess they have to keep up their reputation of being hammered all the time and eating all the fucking cheese. So maybe some of the beer will pour with some of your smoked gouda and maybe some of your more pungent cheese like the Limburger, uh, maybe some blue cheese or gargantholas. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel <laughs> Somebody commented, too. Like your negative was, they, she said, wow, Buffalo, I'm disappointed. So yeah, yeah. This, this brandy thing, people should be drinking more in Buffalo. Well, people like to drink at Buffalo Bills games as they tailgate and then powerbomb people through uh, tables and break their necks. That's what we like doing here. So. <laughs> it's like uh, it's always on uh, like dead spin and uh, like bar, bar stool where they have people tailgating at Bills games and they'll be doing all like stone cold stunners and rock bottoms as they're hammered off of like the t- of, like trucks. <laughs> Into into all kinds of crazy tables and stuff, which just makes us look like it. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Um, Ty, Tyler, or, uh, sorry, Eric says Moosehead Palette has been made since 1933. Had to look that shit up. <laughs> it's research, baby. Yeah, it is. Uh, Ryan says I'm from Wisconsin originally. Can <laughs> confirm. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, you're in Minnesota now, right? Isn't he in Minnesota? I feel like Ryan probably goes home sometimes on the weekends for research, goes back to Wisconsin. Yeah, and that's his excuse. It's like, well, there's seven of the top ten drunkest cities in America, so you know, got to partake when I'm here every weekend. <laughs> Easy. I'm trying to think where Ryan is. Is Ryan in Minnesota now, or oh, I'm just thinking he's walking around just like telling people, "Man, you guys suck. You can't hold your liquor for anything. <laughs> Learn how to drink some real beer around here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom is starting to try to start fights here in the uh, comments. He says. Green Bay is on there because they need to numb the pain from their sorry ass football team. He's like, you call that. Now, Tyler, if you are a Lions fan, I'm not sure that you're allowed to say stuff like that. 
I know Eric is, and he wouldn't say anything like that. I'm not going to say that. I'm that'd not be like a Bills fan saying something. Like, you can't. You lose four Super Bowls in a row. You just shut your trap forever until you win something. Um, yeah, he does say us Lions fans can relate, though. See, <laughs> Lions fans and Bills fans and Browns fans, they should, they should just gather around and just form a single single team and just try to do something. That's yeah, but all they should least, do. At least the Bills have been to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and lost every single fucking one in a row four times. I mean, yeah, like, but that's the Browns fans haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, well, uh, and when they do, they probably fucking win it. So <laughs> <laughs> they probably will. They probably, they probably will. Like, holy shit, we're here. We might as well win it. It'd be like the freaking major league, right? If they can just get one running back that lasts the whole year for them. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? You know what we have to do in the whole fucking. That's, that's, a, that's a fantasy coach's nightmare with the Lions. Yeah. Well, if management didn't throughout half the year and say, "Okay, we're going to ship you to so and so." Yeah. That's true. You guys uh, got you guys got blunt this year, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, he should. Little, he should. Little, little tread on that tires left. I think in Mir Abdullah's days are numbered, but oh yeah, he's, 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 he's sending a blunt to Detroit. Yeah, he's not, not going to get high. Hey, <laughs> as long as I get paid, brother, I don't care where I play. Uh, Ryan says, "Haha, poor lions! I'll drink with you and curse the damn Vikings." <laughs> <laughs> Vikings have a shitty history too, along along with uh, the Bills as well, losing. The but they loss. were spread out. They were spread out. Yeah, they were spread out, but they still lost. <laughs> 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 Doesn't make it. Easier. Well, we took our six losses over the course of thirty years, but did you win? Now, okay, <laughs> okay, then I guess move along. Nothing to see. At least they've been to a Super Bowl. They were like, champions. Yeah, people would be like, at least the Bills have been to a Super Bowl. Yeah, twenty six years ago, and they lost all of them, like all of them in a row. I cannot <laughs> believe that. I watch. I'm like, this is good. this is. No, the only one they had, I think, a legit the first one they against had, the Giants and the first yeah. one, and then the second one against well, the uh, Cowboys. Yeah, but they they, had, like, turnovers. They like how are you gonna misplace Thurman's helmet? Like how are you gonna do that? Like yo, where's our one of the best running backs in football and our best offensive player? Where <laughs> where is his helmet? I don't know. Okay, I just you won't start the game then. That's cool. Just don't have the best <laughs> Someone hiding it from him? I feel it's like Belichick. That's when he started cheating back then. Oh, fucking took Thurman's helmet. You know, he knew it happened. He, he, everyone's like, oh, he's a genius. He had a great defensive, uh, you know, strategy. Yeah, I was taking away Thurman's helmet from the first goal. <laughs> Put somebody else's helmet on and go out there. <laughs> yeah. Be like, where's my helmet? Bill Belichick's over there. Just like, like has a oh, no. logo over top of it. If you ever saw the interview with Lawrence Taylor, it wasn't a Super Bowl, but like during the games or the season and stuff. Like when the visiting teams would come to town, he would like call up and order hookers to the <laughs> visiting team's hotel, and like right. hookers would go knocking on the doors or whatever like that. And the guys are like, "Well, if it's free, I guess." Yeah. You know, and he'd be tired out the next day. <laughs> did, did any of you guys see the uh, thirty for thirty, the two bills, which is Parcells and Belichick? It was really good. I didn't I see hate that one. I knew when it was on, but I didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah, I wanted to punch Bill Belichick in the face repeatedly about six hundred times during the course of the film, but, but. He was still quite knowledgeable, and you learned a lot about like them. At, well, number one is Parcells taking over the Giants back in the '80s, and how Belichick, uh, you know, went along in his first stint with the Browns and all that stuff. And it was really cool to see their relationship. It was like really weird because yeah. of how we how we uh, kind of fucked Parcells when he uh, wanted to take over the Jets, and he quit back in the late '90s. But it was really good. You got insight into those those teams, uh, the Giants teams, the def- how good they were defensively in the '80s, and it's really about well, 30 for 30s are always really good. So, oh, they're pretty good. Yeah. Well, have you ever seen the one of the Bears, from the 83 Bears yep. or whatever? Oh, yeah. It's just like Dick and Buddy Ryan did not even like communicate. <laughs> so they were just <laughs> like, <laughs> the worlds. <laughs> that was fantastic, man. Yeah. <sighs> yeah so what do you learn tonight is the Lions suck, the Packers suck, the Bills suck, the Browns suck, the Vikings don't necessarily suck, but they're not going to win anything. And don't watch football. And we're done. <laughs> Wait a minute. Green Bay doesn't suck because at least they've won a couple. Of yeah, Super Bowls. yeah, that's true. But fuck Aaron Rodgers. Not like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Has Rodgers won twice or just once? Once. Yeah. Right. Once. That's still one more time than everyone else that <laughs> we like. Yeah. Um, my, my, my Seahawks won, but then you know we gave the Patriots the Super Bowl because we don't know how to run the ball from the two with the best fucking running back from the two yard line. So that's cool. Just fucking throw it on a slam pass and then have it bounce in the air and have it intercepted and you lose Super Bowl. Like piece of shit. 
Well, this is like <laughs> Dan Marino's had his rookie year and then we got back. Yeah. I, I like when people talk about, like, if you don't win a Super Bowl, you don't win championships, you suck. I'm like, oh, Dan Marino's like one of the best quarterbacks ever. Just, just so happens the rest of his team usually suck balls. It's not his fault. Doesn't mean Trent Dilfer is better than him, does it? Oh, it doesn't? Okay, then, then just stop, you know? <laughs> Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl because Ray Lewis and the rest of the team murdered people, but also, you know, played very well defensively. <laughs> well, who was the guy that won the <laughs> Well, when uh, Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl, um, their quarterback was Brad Johnson. Yeah, Brad Johnson, so, broken top, Brad Johnson. Yeah. So when they had the the whole inflate gate in New England, mm-hmm. they were talking to quarterbacks of Brad Johnson. Oh, yeah, we we had the balls deflated when I won the Super Bowl. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah, that see, there's a lot of things that they like Belichick cheated about, but I always thought the whole deflated balls thing was kind of stupid. Honestly, it's not it's not that big of a deal. A lot of quarterbacks well, it is do for it. some of the guys catching. I don't usually catch it if it's well. No, I I know, but like so many so many quarterbacks, so many teams do it. I'm not saying it's okay. It's technically illegal, but yeah. Um, it's one of those things where, like, I think spying on walkthroughs during the Super Bowl well, shit, yeah. that's a little bit, like, don't. I mean, that was a Panthers fan. We lost by three. All the first Super Bowls, he won by a field goal. Like, all the teams that were spying on, like, Carolina yeah. and these other teams. I mean, he's team. a good coach. I think Bill Belichick's a, a great coach, one of the best ever, but he also cheated. Like, they well, That's the other thing, too. Then again, it's like, I feel like he cheated, but then it's like, if you can get extra information, it's like the whole Russia thing with Trump. If you can get extra information on your person. <laughs> That's what he did. Who's not going to really take it? You know. Here's the thing: you're supposed to not get caught, Billy Boy. <laughs> if you can get extra detail, someone's going to slide you a file and say, "Take a look at this when you get a chance." <laughs> not Eric, Eric, look. <laughs> Eric, Eric Gilbert says, "The bitterness of a lifetime of losing." Go pack, go, baby. <laughs> I'm a Seahawks fan, so I mean, I've won recently. Me, like me, not my team. I won. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I do feel bad though for like Lions fans and Bills fans and stuff because yeah. you you could it could be a lifetime like someone who's 25 years old didn't see any of the Bills Super Bowls they you know were born right after it and all they know is it's freaking losing pretty much and that sucks man should have some success at some point it was nice that the Bills made the playoffs but like they just made the playoffs barely like they needed Andy Dalton and fucking hell Mary pass to win that was ridiculous. <laughs> If we have anybody watching as a Cubs fan, they're gonna say, "Quit your bitching." <laughs> true. But again, they won. <laughs> Fine. A hundred years later. <laughs> so did, so did the Cavs, right? The Cavs it, finally won. It for takes a while. Team. Yeah, it does. But uh, you know, whatever. It's just sports. Yeah. Sports. All right. Well, I guess we'll go to wrap up middle for a little bit tonight. So appreciate everybody. Yeah, especially staying up this like Jesus. Like Tyler came back, Eric is still talking, Ryan. They're like, you guys are still on? What the hell? Yeah, Backwoods. Yeah, yeah, he's he was on all night. Yeah, Billy was on for like three straight hours. It's awesome. Yeah, for sure. We turn it over to Eric. Oh boy, here we go. You ready for my <laughs> PSA? Is mom watching? Is mom still watching? No, she she said, I'm going to bed. I can't I can't <laughs> stay up anymore. <laughs> But guys, well, if you had well, too much, always welcome. Yeah, if, if you guys had too much to drink, please get a designated driver because in this day and age, there's zero tolerance. Because if you're gonna be here on drive home drunk, you're gonna get pulled over by the cops. You're gonna do the stupid ass sobriety test and make look, look like a fool. Then you're gonna get into the cop car, get a free ride to jail, and then have court fees and then possible prison time. And then if you hit or kill somebody, you guys, you guys know what's gonna happen. You're gonna be in slammer for a while. If you kill yourself, all you've done is hurt your family and friends and sleep and uh, put yourself six feet under. Just sleep off your buzz, get your car the next day, get an Uber, taxi, Lyft, have the bartender get you a ride, have a buddy all for a ride, just something so we can come back next week and see all of us here next Thursday. Yes, indeed. Where's to live by? To live by. Live by. (laughs) And then uh, make sure you check out these guys' channel, Eric and Lions fan. The Beer Patrol, everybody that commented, uh, Backwoods Billy. Tyler. Tyler. Beer by the numbers. He didn't say Tyler's last name. Tyler Finkbeiner. It's Finkbeiner. F I N K B E I N E R. Finkbeiner. And Beer by the Numbers, Ryan, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if Ryan, I wonder if Ryan's going to do something for uh, American Craft Beer Week on this channel this week. Uh, I'm sure. He, he does will. all the data stuff. He might. So he might. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, uh, Tim's Brews as well. He does home brewing stuff. 
Uh, Bum doesn't have a channel, but check out Jody's Share a Beer every Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah. uh, check out Raining Iron Parade. <laughs> nah, not really. Don't ever check out <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't even have a channel anyway, because, you know. <laughs> does Foamy Hack 13 have a channel? Did I ever? I don't know if he does. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he does. A lot of good stuff. Back yeah. And appreciate everybody actually Can't bear dialing me. in here and uh, going to shut it down. But before we go, you really can't have a great American beer festival without having <laughs> a great American, right? Uh-huh. So, uh oh. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta close it out strong. You gotta close it out proper. You know what I mean? So Unfortunately, we, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for a horseman. A horseman? A horseman goes by the name of Rick. Not here. Are you a horseman? I could be. What kind of you? Friday now, you can see me in ball game. Bring all your horsemen. Cause now we'll have no dogs. Moondog Rex and the Monkey Brothers. Yeah, I'm looking for a goes by the name of Rick Flair. Don't know him. Can I leave a message? I can. All right, write this down. Tell him it's Big Dust. Okay. The American Dream. Okay. Tell him to meet me Friday night, Starcade. Meet you at the Starcade. Yeah, Starcade, Friday night. Uh, that, I, I don't know what you're wasting your time for. Is this Baby Doll? <laughs> baby Doll, I know that was you, you Jezebel! Hello, I'm looking for some horsemen. I've got plenty. How many you need? Four. Four horsemen. Yes, sir. Did Big Dust calling on behalf of Crocker Promotion? You know, they understand what you're saying. But... Sorry, I got a little bit of a lift. Uh, what about Chris Benoit? Oh, he did. Sorry. No, I don't really know what you're talking about. Is this J.J. Dillon's? No. Don't lie to me, J.J. You and I go way back, Jack. Well, J.J., you got her own person. Don't mess with the American dream, J.J. My eyes are open as big as silver dollars, Jack. Well, you got the wrong guy. You and I, J.J., let us strike back. Captain Rose is the last of the strike back. J.J. giving you a yellow dog. All right, America, we'll catch you next week. Remember, there's always time. Get your beer on. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs>